It's time for Windows Weekly. Paul Thorat and Mary Jo Foley are here. We're going to talk about the Neo and the Duo, the two Microsoft's dual screen devices coming out at the end of this year. Uh, they have some interesting thoughts about that. The Bing problem continues. Microsoft is not backed down. And get ready for the LDAP apocalypse. It's all coming up next. Yeah, you do need to know about this if you use LDAP. It's all coming up next on Windows Weekly. Windows Weekly is brought to you from the Twit LastPass Studios, securing every access point in your company. It doesn't have to be a challenge. LastPass unifies access and authentication to make securing your employees simple and secure. Check out lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. This is Windows Weekly with Paul Thorat and Mary Jo Foley. Episode 657, recorded Wednesday, January 29th, 2020. Bing jacked. Windows Weekly is brought to you by Thinkst Canary. Detect attackers on your network while avoiding irritating false alarms. Get the alerts that matter. For 10% off and a 60-day money-back guarantee, go to canary.tools slash twit. Don't forget to use the code twit in the How Did You Hear About Us box. And by FreshBooks, the number one accounting software in the cloud for self-employed professionals and their teams. Improve workflow and streamline your business with FreshBooks Teams. Try it free for 30 days at freshbooks.com slash windows. It's time for Windows Weekly, the show where we talk about Windows Weekly with Paul Therott and Mary Jo Foley. Paul Therott from his eponymous website. <laughs> Yep. If I say that, do you ever say that, Paul? Like you give them your card and say, "I'm no, from the eponymous I'm always, website." I have, you know, you go into a store or wherever, and they say, "What's your email address?" And I'm like, "It's my name." And they look at you confused. And I say, "It's Paul at Therot." Then you spell it out, and they look, they kind of raise their eyebrow, like, "Really?" Is it Paul at Therot dot aol dot com or yeah, yahoo yeah. dot com? <laughs> yes, I use that one a lot. I'm not uh, giving that one up. Mary Jo Foley, she, uh, she's all about Microsoft at allaboutmicrosoft.com. It is ZDNet blog, which means you probably have a MJ Foley at ZDNet or something like that. Nope, I don't. Nope. But I have a special email that I created for myself. That's no, private. I will not say it on the yeah. air. I, I, I also <laughs> I'll do. I'll say it. It's <laughs> hey, I, hey, I also hey. do. But I, my um, publicly known email for the last 15, oh, forever, more, more than yeah. 15 years, is so stupid and childish, I'm embarrassed every time I give it out. Leo at leoville.com. Yeah. So what's embarrassing. the origin of that? I don't, I don't think that's bad. I couldn't get leo.com. The Royal Bank of Canada snarfed that up because their mascot's <laughs> Leo the Lion. Nice. And uh, I couldn't get laporte.com. Sure. So this is back. This is like 94, 95. This is a long time yeah. ago. Yeah. So at the time, I thought, you know, at the time I was like, Til, like it was CR, it was crl.com slash tilde laporte uh, right. because crl was my uh in those early days my isp yeah i had an isp email address like that too Net before that something. i was seven three one oh five comma three one copy serve yeah <laughs> <laughs> yep, I can't and then i had some sort of mci mail address i don't remember what that sure. was but nothing talked to anything so Nineteen. Anyway, Leoville is such an embarrassing name. I have now a more grown-up name, but it's, but I don't want to give it to anybody. Just like you, Mary no. Jo, because it's like yep. I don't want spammers to get it. No, you I, don't. I like an email address where you get no email. Yeah, <laughs> I, have I don't have that, but that would be great. Wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> it is so hard now. If I want important to get important email, there really is no way. I know. There's so much crap in my inbox. I miss email all the time, and there's just no way. To, yep. to filter it that I can be sure. Mm -hmm. It's just tough. But that's a seems first like world problem. It's a solvable problem. problem, but it ain't. It seems like nope. it. I know. Microsoft tried Focus Inbox, but it doesn't really work. Well, that's why Teams, right? And uh, Mary Jo's historic hatred of Focus Inbox comes I out yet again. So it doesn't because so, it doesn't solve the problem. It gives you a false sense of security, right. and it always puts the wrong mail in the Focus yes. Inbox. And I, the I, if it way, worked, it would be great. That. First thing every time I can't but it, stand. Focus but it can't on. possibly know what you really want. That's the problem. I know. This is the problem. This is the problem with any smart technology. This goes back to Clippy and, and all of these attempts to o overthink what it is you're trying to do. Like yeah. it's it's well intentioned, and it just never seems to work properly. And if you can't trust like something like that because you want to glance and make sure nothing important happened, 
Yeah. And then four hours later, it goes by and, you know, and you look at the other thing, the filtered part, and you're like, oh, there's the email I've been waiting for. Yep. <laughs> um, that's when you turn it off. It just doesn't, you can't, totally. you can't play with that. I would guess that anybody uh, who's like a tech, tech enthusiast and gets a lot of email, especially, you know, people who work in the tech business, periodically, probably every two or three years, says, gosh, darn it, I'm going to fix this. <laughs> Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Writes a lot of scripts, a I'm lot of take filters. the time. Yeah. I'm gonna go. Yeah. I'm gonna unsubscribe. Yeah. I'm. Yep. Yep. And yeah, and it, nothing, does, it takes just, months to undo it. <laughs> it's I like, know. It's it's like trying to beat Ugh. back uh, beach erosion. You can mm -hmm. have little victories, but <laughs> yeah. it's gonna get you in it's the end. It's basically building a sand castle. Man, that looks yeah. pretty. Yeah. What a nice setup. Yep. Push. Push. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That yeah. Disney Plus happens. I'm getting email about Frozen and Elsa. <laughs> You know. uh, the yeah. best. I have two filters that really have always worked. One is if there is the word unsubscribe in the body, just put that in a uh, folder mm -hmm. called lists, mailing lists, and never look nice. at it. And yep. then, and I don't bother trying to unsubscribe. I just as long as it's out of the out of sight, out of mind. Yeah, yeah. That's and then uh, Fast Mail has a filter that. Uh, so I have a my provider Fast Mail has uh, its own contact list, which I'm careful not to. You know, I keep it separate from my other stuff. If I if I want to get mail, I add that person, that email address to my mm -hmm. contact list on Fastmail, and then I have a Fastmail rule that says that goes into a folder called important. So only oh, right. people I have explicitly said they're important, I, they're in my contact list, get added. That works pretty good. You guys aren't in mm. it yet, but someday. No, no. <laughs> you should I never put another us another ten years. This podcast, I can at least petition you. <laughs> yeah, 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 it does require <laughs> to get in there. Well, it's kind of it's harder than hearing, and you know, it's harder than becoming uh, a saint in the uh, Catholic Church. You have to <laughs> commit a few right. miracles, mm -hmm. but eventually. I never. I almost never send you email either because I know no. you'll never see it because you get so much email. Well, right? I would never email. I mean, it would have to be super important or yeah. Something. How would you get a hold yeah. of me? Uh, I think I go to I Lisa. Probably get Paul Lisa. Life, <laughs> That's honestly. See, and by the way, it drives would, me yeah. crazy because uh, <laughs> she says, "Why do everybody thinks that I, you know, that's the way to get to you?" <laughs> well, listen, they're I'm right, not saying Lisa. Lisa's on the ball and you're not. I, I guess what I'm saying is, <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> that's exactly. She no, reads Lisa's her email. on the ball. Is all I'm saying. She <laughs> reads her email. I maybe three, four times a week will look at the email. Oh maybe. wow! Really? Yeah. I would never think to bother you with email. I mean, normally. That's not a bother. I love hearing. For, I love hearing from my friends. Well, I mean, I just, yeah, you know, I, I speak to you every week. Don't send me like your <laughs> you know? joke list. You oh, know, yes, grandpa's yes. grandpa's joke right. list. This, um, Windows support email. I was wondering if you could <laughs> take a stab at hey, it. Hey, I got a great recipe for a no rise, no need bread. Would you like it? Here, all you have to do is send it to nine friends. Do you remember that when that went around the? What they yep. call it the. Um, the, chain letters, right? Yeah, but it was, and it was a, <laughs> but you know what? It was worse than chain letter because you got a jar with bread in it. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Mennonite like bread or something. Chain yeah. Letter. And it was crap bread, by the way. It was the worst. <laughs> and what well, you, you and then you had to, this trip. Yeah, well, you had to make it. Yeah. And then you had to divide it up into nine other jars. <laughs> and if you don't, you're cursed. For yes. Life. It was a chain letter. Yeah. But it wasn't an easy one, it was one you had to actually make bread. I would just yeah, but I see that. people on Facebook who are like, uh, I just want to see how many people are going to respond to this. Uh, <laughs> tell me something about me that I, you know, whatever. It's like, it's I don't always know. Just nonsense. Like, yeah, <laughs> I, I don't know about myself or something, you know, whatever. But <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah. guys, come on. Doesn't That's anyone that. else work? By the way, I just want everybody to know I had communicated with Paul and Mary Joe earlier today saying, let's pretend we're Joe Rogan and stoned and see what the show sounds like. And that's, well, I thought you that's said the experiment. What do you mean, Elon? We're just all being Elon. <laughs> this, right. is, this is the kind of discursive, pointless conversation I hear on I most other podcasts. I know. Yep. But we're you just... guys take the trouble to write a rundown. In this case, three times in one day, write a rundown. We did. <laughs> Well, allegedly, because again, you couldn't I'm not see really it. Sure, Mary Jo's like, no, I've been working hard on this all morning. I'm surprised you can't see it. I did. <laughs> it's basically the so I. They, and then Paul said, "Forget it. I'm going to the gym." Okay, well, <laughs> <laughs> screw it. I'm, I'm lifting iron. I expect this to be solved by the time I get back. <laughs> um, actually. Your first item is thinking more about uh, Neo and Duo, the mm -hmm. new uh, devices coming at the end of the year, which, frankly, I spend, I almost every night wake up and think about them. 
Do you really? <laughs> Leo, so do I. Yeah, I really I want them. I dreamt about them this yeah, week. Yeah, see? We're I obsessed did. with these. People said, why did Microsoft announce this a year ahead of time? This is why. This is why. Actually, this is literally why. In fact, um, I know that Panos Panay didn't want to discuss this stuff back in October, but I think you kind of needed to have that reveal so that the SDK that they just released for the knee for the duo, right? Duo, sorry, the Android one, yeah. uh, makes sense, and is and you have the context for it because I think otherwise there would have been a little interest, of course, but I think there would have been less interest if we hadn't seen the devices. Yeah, agree. And we want them. And the thing is, I this is opportune because they're letting Samsung. Nokia, all these people put out folding phones that are god awful because they try <laughs> yeah. to put the screen over yeah. it. Did you see yeah. the new Nokia uh, that everybody fifteen hundred dollars? Everybody's saying, "Oh, this is the greatest thing." Flip phone. They put out a a, 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 a video that says, "By the way, it's normal for them to, for there to be some bubbles and yeah. wrinkles in the screen." Well, that may yep. be normal, yeah. but that's not what I want in a screen. No. I touched lumps the light bulb bumps. yesterday and lumps it exploded. And and I have a bubble on my finger, a finger, and I can tell you it's not normal. No, it's not normal. No. So the notion <laughs> it's, it's of having good. two non-bubbly screens sure. with a hinge is fine with me. Well, I don't you understand. But this is part of the transition, right? So obviously folding displays are happening, and we will have that science fiction future where we can unfold this thing and there won't be any creases mm -hmm. and it will work great. But... It's, it's going to take a while to get there. This is going to take yeah. a while. So we're going to have dual displays, I think, first. Yeah, I think those will be more mechanically sound or whatever, or less uh, prone to failure. And then eventually we will have reliable, decent folding displays. Probably not mm -hmm. going to happen this year. Somebody in the chat room says, why do we want folding displays? And I will submit this is why. We want something pocketable mm -hmm. yes. that has the screen real estate of an iPad or something mm -hmm. like that, of a yes. tablet. Yep. Yeah. Actually, so... You could extrapolate that out a little bit because if you think about like the um, like the standard size of a smartphone, right? So normal smartphone. Mm -hmm. If this thing was half the height, if I could fold this thing over, that makes it's the Ooh, size of a wallet. Yeah, right. That's, that's Even that, Nokia. that is yeah. very interesting. Yeah. Um, if you're yeah. carrying a computer, where maybe it's the size of a, a keyboard instead of the size of the you know the full deal, and you can just kind of fold it out, you know, there's some value there. I think across mm -hmm. the the different machine types or form factor, well, or, um, uh, display sizes. There's lots of different interesting uh, things that can happen. I, 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 I still, I, I really would like to discuss this a little further because I still hear back yeah. from people who are freaked when I complain about how dual screens are distracting. Like I, I, yeah. I will never, I know that I will never stop hearing from this, but here's what I'm going to say to these people. Oh. <laughs> you can't beat physiology. You're wrong. <laughs> Multiple screens are distracting, and you are making the same argument that no one would ever make. But anytime you see someone texting in their car when they're driving, That's they think like you think. Yeah. Mm. They they mm. think they can do this. But, but Paul, you can't. I wasn't here for this debate, but I did see yeah. the fallout. Um, yep. I have three screens on my desk, mm -hmm. right? And it's not that I'm focused on three screens. You're right. That's silly. I mean, I'm not running a nuclear power plant, but <laughs> but I do. <laughs> Well, okay, but you're going to have to hear the back end of the argument. So the the other half of it is that the, the issue with um, dual screens on a, a Neo or a Duo is that they're not really dual screens. It, it's artificially separating the screen with a divider so that you can get something that's just a normal screen. It's not this panoramic display. How big, it's is, just, the, how big is that middle bezel? Is It It should be as narrow as possible. Dim. It's pretty dim. Yeah, yeah so, it looks like oh, it was big. Yeah. And but I would first gen, first gen yeah. that, will, that will change. Be bigger. That, that will I make it yeah. better. I think you, know? you have to have a hinge. I think uh, certainly with current materials, and I know Samsung's yeah. only one is going to have a thin glass screen, but I think there's no way to really have a bending screen right now. It, no, it, and plus, it, will, it, it, it will happen. No, the whole hallmark happen. of Surface is their hinges, right? Like that's what they pride themselves yeah. on is yeah. the hinge. Yeah, so actually this is kind so. of good timing for them because Microsoft's not ready to release a folding display yeah. device. Right. And so we, you know, yeah. they make great no, hinges. So no, neat. Maybe it, that will be good. It's there's nothing wrong device. with it. I, there's different I people. So the reason I have multiple screens is, and the same reason I want a Duo or a Neo is I have one screen that has... Like the ch like, if you do video editing, you'll have a screen with the video and a screen with the controls. Mm -hmm. In my case, the chat room and messaging is one screen. Yeah, I have yeah, a lot yeah, no, of you messengers have to do this, open, but, but you're also not flying a plane, <laughs> you know, no. so or driving a car. But the thing, like, the, the words, main like, screen is the one I'm working on ninety percent of the time. Yeah. 
Mm. But I, Look, I know people. I, have I know outs. people like using multiple displays. I'm not. I'm not ragging on it per you, se. But you don't use don't them at all. No. You don't, please no. don't believe you're not being distracted. If if there's something animating over here and you're trying to focus on this, yeah. you're not focusing on this. You can't. Yeah. It's impossible. It's just the way I think we're built. Though, I think though you can use this these coming devices in a lot of different like they call them postures, right? So yeah. you can have a single image across two screens. You can have one thing on the left, one on the right that don't yep. ever interact. They're two separate things, almost like as, as if you snapped two apps side by side, right? And then there's a yeah. spanning thing where you can have some of the content on this side and it can mm -hmm. be pulled over across to the other device and enlarged or made smaller. So there's different ways you can use oh, yeah. the and, apps, and right? To be to be fair to, you know, because people will say, well, what if I want to read over here and take notes yeah. over here? That That's an right. excellent use for two screens. It's really an excellent use for two sides of the same screen. And that's yeah. kind of my uh, or point. Or a big you know, screen would work. Yeah. Right. But would you don't work. want to carry yeah. a big screen in your pocket, Paul. So that's, that's And that's exactly yeah. right. The, the the thing that Leo said up front, I think, is, is the real impetus for this. They're selling it on this other thing. But the, the real point of this is to get something smaller that is a – if it's a form factor, something that will fit in your pocket easier. Mm -hmm. If it's a laptop-style thing or whatever, it's just a smaller – you know, hopefully yep. lighter device or whatever that can unfold. It's it's not it's not really it's not because two screens opens the up the magic of productivity or whatever nonsense they were saying. Like I know. Right. It, it's there's there's nothing wrong with doing, you know, note taking and you know, whatever. I mean if you're if you're a student you can make the argument. But I, I, I think the point is simply that existing devices already solve that need. Mm. The change that's coming in these devices is what Leo said up front. It, it's really yep. about the the portability or the yeah portability is probably the best way to yeah. say it. But you know where that lingo comes from, right? Where they say it'll increase your productivity and all that. So they have to hire people to do these like design <laughs> studies, right? They do. This, like yep. they have to yep. no. have this like grand <laughs> idea about the design. Like we saw with mm -hmm. the original surfaces, they were designed for creators, right? Remember when they first yep. said that yep. word and you're like, what? Right. And um, sure. then I think this device is going to be targeted more for people who are prosumers, like really keyed into productivity. So they have to back that play with words, right? And they're going to be like, you know yeah. what? We found, we did research and nine people out of 10 are more productive when they use dual screens like this. So that's you know, better marketing right? than the real reason <laughs> this guy would want it, which is, are you that guy that wants to flip open the phone so everyone asks you what device you have? <laughs> this is for you because it's yeah. crazy looking. It's really different. Um, nobody wants to think they're that person, but no. a lot of a lot of early adopters of this kind of device are yeah. that person, right? Yeah, it has nothing to do with productivity. It's like, man, I've been really hampered by my <laughs> ability to get work done on a laptop. Thank God, someone has <laughs> divided the screen in half. It's like an inch thick, and now I can, you know, unleash the magic of productivity. Across two displays, it's crazy. And you, but you know what the other thing right. is they're trying to do, and they they did say this in the October launch. They said we're trying to create a new device category, and so I'm really curious when these come out, do they market yeah. them as PCs, as tablets, as a dual screen tablet, right. or do they call right. it some new imaginary term that they come up so with? Right. That's not <laughs> just a. That's not your imagination working there. Remember they? Well, you know, I mean, they were kind of weird Microsoft when yeah. we referred to this thing as a phone. Right. So the, the early duo. indication yeah. right back in October was, look, yeah, it's Android. Yes, you can make phone calls on it. It's not a phone. It's something right. different. They really do right. want it to be something different. They do. And you know what I remembered when I was, when I had my dream this week about the surface. Yeah, I really did dream about this. And that's bad. That means I'm obsessing oh, over this. You were right? like sleepwalking, <laughs> so changing the settings in one note so nothing would sync. <laughs> No, in my in my dream, I saw the mm -hmm. Franklin Covey planner. You know, remember when the Courier came out and everybody was like, "This is meant to be the uh, computer version of what these planners are yeah. that people had on their desks with all the things they could write notes in and have their calendar and all that." This is that again, right? They're trying to come up with this thing that um, is used in a different way than a regular PC. But it's more just like, hey, if you're one of those people in the world who say, I don't really need a PC, do you do you carry a planner around or do you have a planner? Because if you do, we've got the device for you. I feel like I feel like Microsoft and, and maybe the rest of the industry too is is trying to solve a problem. I'm not sure if it was a problem, but uh, the same problem they've been trying to solve for a long time. So 
back in uh, 97, 98, whatever it was, active desktop came out room with Internet Explorer. Mm -hmm. And they had like mm -hmm. a channel bar that would float on the desktop and you'd have this active content or whatever. The yeah. problem with that stuff was you couldn't see it because when you were using applications, they were in front of it. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. in Windows Vista, and briefly in XP, if I'm not mistaken, they had this... Uh, they had that sidebar thing with little yeah. gadgets or widgets, whatever the name of the things were. And they were little like a clock and little music player and all this. And this notion was you could have the stuff over on the side. They'd always be on the screen. Actually, it's interesting this this is happening right now because yesterday, Monday was the 10th anniversary of the iPad, which mm -hmm. prompted right. a number of articles from normally uh, very pro-Mac folks like John Gruber, mm -hmm. basically saying the iPad is a flop. That That... Really bothers me because all the now they're admitting what I have been saying all along that this <laughs> thing was supposed to be the bullet to the back of the head of the PC industry. Well, maybe, and but admittedly, it, and you read Steven Sanofsky's piece about the Windows <laughs> team's reaction yeah, because not, it did yeah. shake up Microsoft to the point that they did Windows 8. Yeah, and by the way, wrongly. Yeah. And, yeah, and they've spent yeah. the you know last so, ten years fixing that mistake. You almost that could was make an the argument to something that wasn't a problem. That Duo and Neo are kind of a uh, continued chain reaction well, to the original iPad release. The difference Although, between the Duo and the Neo, though, right, is that they they're not replacing Windows with this new thing. See, the problem with Windows well, we've 8 we've learned was, that lesson. We've learned that yeah, lesson. Like, right. Thank God. You know, they went, they went off the deep end with Windows 8. So they backtracked on that, thank God. And now they've been making other versions of Windows 10 to work on these other devices. Kind of like mm -hmm. what they did with XP, right? With tablet, PC, and Media Center, and so forth. Mm -hmm. um, that's the better approach because the core product doesn't really have to change, does it? <laughs> you know, yeah. it still right. works on these traditional devices. Right. And the reason I don't think these are actually... Uh, an answer to the iPad is because if they were, I think Microsoft would be trying to do Windows 8 again, right? Which would be yeah. touch first, tablet OS type thing. But it's not that. I mean, you're even going to be able to run your line of business apps in a container on these things. So they did learn that lesson that their their place in the industry isn't trying to do the, you know, low end consumption focused device right. that's like an iPad. It's something different. How different There's is it so, really? I don't know, <laughs> but it's different. You know, I, oh God, you could go, we could talk for two hours about this. I mean, there's something really interesting about the fact that when Apple made the iPhone, they took this gigantic thing, OS 10, and they turned it mm -hmm. into something smaller and added touch and so forth. So it worked on this tiny device. And then when it came time to make this tablet, there were all these prototype images of what the Mac would look like with touch and on-screen keyboards. Mm -hmm. And they came up with this thing that was based on the iPhone. They went in the complete opposite direction. And yeah. people who kind of derided it at the time were like, well, it's just a giant iPod Touch. Which, by the way, it, it was literally exactly that. But mm -hmm. there's something important about that screen size. There's something that made sense. you know. And, and this was a conversation I think we had with uh, when Leah was away. But you know, one of the things I did appreciate, even though I didn't agree with it, all of it, was when uh, Steve Jobs introduced the iPad, he did list out, like, it has to be better at these core tasks. And he went down the list. And it was in some and it wasn't in others. It doesn't really matter. But, you know, I've said this before, and I'm not trying to be hypercritical of Microsoft, but if you go back and look at the justification they gave for the Duo and the Neo, there was none. <laughs> there was mm. there was literally mm. like we're trying to invent a new form factor. Because why? Because it, you're being self-serving. What Like, what does this help? And then they talked mm. about that thing that I've kind of criticized, whether you agree with it or not, yeah. uh, that somehow dual screens <laughs> um, open up some kind of new type of productivity or whatever. Um, I, you know, okay, whatever. But mm. I mean, will it be better for email? Will it be better for web browsing? You know, mm. I, one, one of the, I think that what they've done with the SDK is very interesting. I uh, will talk about that a little bit further in a bit, but like one of the things I'm a little worried about is this has the feel of, let's just see what people come up with. <laughs> you know, mm. I mean, maybe there will, is there some killer app that, that makes this form factor make sense? If there is, Microsoft doesn't know what it is because mm. they haven't discussed it. Um, you know what I they're, think they're, the killer, I think they're hoping the killer app is, it, my, my guess right now and what we've seen so far is the killer app is the launcher. It's the UI, right? Because, and the way, yeah. the reason I say that is if you look at 
the mock-ups of what the launcher looks like. And it looks a lot like the next generation Android launcher. You've got all your app icons, like the most important productivity apps up at the top. Underneath, you've got a list of your most recent, most recently opened documents or things that they think you would want to access first. Kind of like if you use the office.com site or the new office app, it's like that. Yeah, by the way, exactly right. And right? also that add-in for the browser. It's, it's funny how that UI... And yep. also the all-in-one office app on mobile, right? Right. That UI is kind of repeating itself. Uh, sorry. It is. But, yeah. yeah, and so I think that's the killer app because I think the the place this device will sit is in the world of this is your productivity PC or tablet or whatever they call it. Interesting. So the um, Duo, you know, uh, well, both. both of them, I think, is what you're saying. Both. So way, we should make this clear: the the Duo is the Duo. is an Android device. Is Android, it is, yeah. and the Neo yeah. is a Windows device. My, yeah. Microsoft if, would like you not to worry too much about that, right? They would. I mean, they, I, they're making well, the UI I mean, look alike on both of them, uh, you, right? Well, is one big? Make, is the Duo smaller because it's a phone, or yeah? But they said it's it, not a yeah. phone. <laughs> Leo, right. it's not a phone. It is not. Don't a call phone. it a phone. Um, it is a phone. The first thing they showed yeah. you so it was somebody Microsoft answering. Microsoft legal's on the phone. Oh, <laughs> oh they're not. They're not on the phone. They're on the duo. They're on the duo. Right. <laughs> duo me. You duo um, me. Duo yeah. over. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, look. I. I. When. When the Microsoft launcher first came out, there was a little bit of pushback from the Windows fan guy, the Windows Phone fan guys, right? Because. You know, it wasn't live tiles. It didn't have all those kind of cool features that everyone loved from Windows Phone. But the argument I, I made at the time was you need to give this a little bit of effort and look at this because this represents Microsoft's current thinking on mobile user experiences. And I would say that the, I think it was a week or two ago, I talked about a, a preview version of the next version of the launcher, which I believe is this thing that Mary Jo is mm -hmm. describing and yep. a way to get it today on your phone and take a look at where Microsoft is thinking now. And I, yeah. I think this is what she said, I think is absolutely correct. This is the 2020 version of where Microsoft thinks mobile and we'll say web UX can should be, you know, and mm -hmm. is their plan for UX kind of across the board. Right. Right. Because if you think of these again as what what's their purpose in life, it's to make you more productive and more organized. What's the best way yeah. to do that? Put your documents and your people and the things that you are most likely to access first right front and center in the UI, right? <laughs> Instead of really you having fun. to it search sound, around. It sounds like you're talking about Windows Phone, by the way. Uh, when you, If you yeah, think about what you I know. just said, it, it I know, sounds right? very much like that. It's a different... Except it, it looks so different from that, but, it looks different, but yeah. the idea is that, right? It's like the yep. people, the documents, and the apps that are most <laughs> important to you are right there, right? This, I, I, this came to mind when we first talked about Windows Phone when it was first yeah. coming out. It's funny because it's coming to mind now, but if you go back to Windows 95 and the document-centric interface, one of the things that Microsoft experimented with at the time, which was going to be the future of UI uh, back then, was this notion of you don't have to think like, I I'm going to start a I – I need to find words somewhere in the menu. Right. You're like, I just want to make a new document. And there was a thing for that right at the top of the start menu. Mm -hmm. And it was a document-centric thing. you know. Yeah. And that that thinking has kind of evolved over the years. I want to communicate with Mary Jo. Do I need to worry about finding the the particular app that is the right. way that her and I communicate, or do I just go to her, you know, mm -hmm. in my menu or whatever? So yeah. there's, it's funny. They're still, they're still kind thinking of working like on that. This. They yeah. are. Yep. It's the same thinking. It is, and it's not bad. I've been using like to uh, lately to yeah. access my apps. I've I've been going to Office.com, signing in with my Office 365 account. And everything I want is right there. Like the thing I was yep. just working on or the thing I sent you through Skype, it's right there. I don't have to figure out like, where is that again? Is it an email attachment? Did I send it in Skype? Everything that you just yep. used is there. This is that's, um, that's this, this is semi-profound because for old guys like me who are very set in their ways and have a very particular workflow and I, mm -hmm. I have a many years long developed way of doing things, through, in my case, through the File Explorer and Windows – Mm. And I sync certain folders from OneDrive and I manage things a certain way. You know, one of the trouble, like, for example, when I was experimenting with Chromebooks, which are web-based, obviously, one of the problems I had was, well, I don't have that integration with the file system. How do I? And, yeah. and what you're describing is how you do interact with that stuff. It, you can use mm -hmm. a uh, an extension that works in the browser. You can just go to that site, like you said. Mm -hmm. um, if you're using the Microsoft Launcher on these devices or on your phone today, you basically get that view right in the UI. Mm -hmm. it, it's... 
it's it's hard for me because I'm so set in my ways. I know. You don't think that way, um, right? <laughs> I don't. It's like the difference between use like, you know, I pin apps to my taskbar. A lot of other people would access those same web apps in tabs in a single browser window. Mm. We're doing the same thing. Right. We're just doing it a different way. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Or getting to the same place in a different way. Yeah. And that's yeah. what this is. It's it's I'm not saying it's better or worse. It's just different. Mm -hmm. And because I'm so set in my ways, it's hard for me to yeah. switch, you know, the change. Yeah. Um, but yeah. I, it's probably not hard for other people. <laughs> well, for it's, many other for younger people. Well, I don't for whatever. Yeah, I mean, so, you know. Right. So the, here here's another thing that I've been thinking about with these devices. Who are these for, right? Are they for yeah. Are they for people who, you know, we know a lot of these people. People who say, people? I don't need a PC. Are they for no. people or animals? No. Are they, are they, <laughs> you know how Mary Jo feels about people. <laughs> <laughs> no, what I mean is, are they for all these people we, we increasingly are running into who say, I don't really need a PC anymore. Right. Right. right? And if it's, if it is for those people, maybe changing up the way you work is okay because they don't have all these ingrained workflows like we have. Let me this run something by you that uh, we were talking about yesterday. It's pretty clear, maybe you, you'll agree with this, that the, the trend in the computer industry is moving computing power to the edge, away from a centralized computer, mm -hmm. even from a desktop or a laptop, to mm -hmm. a variety of devices. Your phone, your Amazon Echo, your television, mm -hmm. that, that that's where the computing power is going. And I, you know, this is kind of part of that post PC era thinking mm -hmm. putting more computing power in an edge device for a lot of people. It's the same reason young people don't have a home phone, right? They don't need right. one. Yeah. Yeah, so if you have purpose. more computing in a edge device, that's like your phone that you could carry with you. Maybe you mm -hmm. don't need a desktop or a laptop. Right. You're writers. You guys are a bad example because you need a key. Yeah, no, we, right. We, we are very niche in yeah. our needs, for sure. But normal people yeah, probably I, are satisfied with their phone. I mean, for years in for Japan, sure. the phones were more powerful. People just didn't buy computers. Mm -hmm. Right. Or yeah. as uh, our smartphones are coming to places in the world that never had computers, those people don't have any need for a computer. They don't feel like mm -hmm. they're... They do everything on the phone. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I I feel like that smart edge thing requires smart cloud too. I mean, and there's yeah. a well, right guess what tool business for Microsoft's the job kind of thing. In. Yeah, by the way. Right. <laughs> well, no, I mean, for example, like one of the things that makes all those edge devices powerful is when you have like a centralized storage server. Mm -hmm. um, that, so That's that you're, why it like works. Our, Your data is co common yeah. data, right? Yeah. yeah. That's why we right. can do so it. Like, I think you need both of those. I also, yeah, but that's Marisha Microsoft's was talking, business. So it would make sense for them to get smart edge, smarter edge. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, they don't need uh, to sell computers mm -hmm. anymore, maybe. Mm -hmm. This conversation is, could, is probably repeated across different types of products. I mean, think about Microsoft Teams, where I would kind of say the same thing. Mm -hmm. It's not really for me, <laughs> but <Right. laughs> I sort of get how other people would find yeah. this to be very productive. Mm -hmm. Um. Well, you were just and, complaining about email. This is this is why <laughs> people have fled to Slack, uh, Teams, and other yeah. no, I get tools because email. See, to me, work. it's more like the devil, you know. But I, yeah, yeah. for sure, yeah. I'm not. I and I'm not belittling Teams or anything like that. I, it's an incredible tool, but I mean, I don't. Look, it's over for me, folks. This is what I'm you're, saying. You're, I'm you're almost <laughs> dead. about me. It's this you know, about this me. is you're the old. Go on school. without me. He, he's Every, still he's gonna gonna stuck fine. in Amiga. <laughs> your chat apps and your folding screen <laughs> non-phones, you're all going to be good. No, remember, I'll be here with my that? desktop PC from Packard <laughs> Bell, 1996. Mm -hmm. Your TI Windows calculator. 8, mm -hmm. Or Windows yeah. 98 or whatever the hell it was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think it makes sense yeah. if you're, if you're, if you know your core business is, is cloud yeah. to make smart edge devices and, and to, I mean, they're not going to stop making surface tablets and laptops, but, but right. That's where the that's where it seems to be moving, and I think that you know yep. the other thing is there's an imperative on every company to find the next thing. It is. Right. You don't right. want to just coast on what you do. You you can't yep, totally doesn't right. mean the neo and duo are the are going to succeed, but it means they're but they need to try stuff. Yeah. The one thing, by the way, another aspect of this thing that I think is super important. If you look at what Microsoft did and is doing with Chromium, mm -hmm. I think they have an opportunity here to do something similar with Android. Um, they talked about this partnership that they have with Google. It's no more a partnership than anyone who buys an AOSP gets or whatever. But they're now they 
they have a seat at the table and they maybe through this SDK and through other work they might do with Google, they can influence the actual platform and that Android 11, I think it is, it's coming out this coming year, um, might have some input from Microsoft as one of the companies that's making these types of devices. I think, yeah. you know, Samsung and whoever else is doing this, I'm sure have also had input on mm -hmm. how it evolves. Um, and so I, I think it's important from that perspective as well, because even though Microsoft doesn't necessarily own the platform, whether you're talking about Chromium or Android, they might still in this case have some influence over it, which would be interesting. Mm. So like, I, I like your thinking there because I think what we have to think about is Microsoft isn't just designing Surface in a vacuum. The Surface team, when they build something, they sit down at the table with the people who do Office 365, the people who do Intune, the people who do MSN and Bing and Edge. And they say, all right, we're going to build this thing. Here's this dual screen thing. What, what do you have, other mm -hmm. teams, mm -hmm. that would work? With this thing. Well, that's by the so, way, that's true. That's huge. Right? And and if you think yeah. about Microsoft 365, the core part of that being Office 365, yeah. you know, Neo or Duo, those things are both great devices for that platform. Yeah. And uh, you know, I, yes, I know one of them doesn't have Windows on it, but Windows is only yeah. really part of Microsoft 365. And as far as productivity goes, and meeting people where they are and so forth, I mean. Uh, they can, you know, they're still going to make a device that will, uh, we'll see what happens this year. Will there be third party devices that mm -hmm. ship with the Microsoft launcher? Right. Wouldn't that be yeah. interesting? That would be, that would be, there but I was thinking about collections, you know, that feature, you, neither of us really thought it was a big deal. The thing they added to edge <laughs> so you can do shopping and compare, yeah. you know, if you're cutting and pasting websites, comparing them in one place and having them all accessible, but on this kind of a device, Collections makes a lot more sense, right? Because it's a device for organizing and and yeah. keeping your things, your personal set of things that you want to have readily accessible all in one place. So maybe they right. built collections because of this, right? Speaking hmm. of uh, working with Google, I don't know if you saw this this morning, uh, or actually it was yesterday afternoon's uh, article in the information, Google developing hmm. new unified communications app <laughs> for businesses. Yeah. Going right finally, after teams, right? right? Yeah, finally. <laughs> it includes well, functionality by their fifth or sixth from the temp. They're probably going to get it right. Yeah, maybe, <laughs> maybe it includes uh, Hangouts Meet functionality, Google Video Conferencing, Hangouts Chat. Uh, it includes uh, Drive. It includes uh, Gmail. Yeah, it, yeah. It's, so it's just like Slack and Teams. Basically. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. what I think. It, I think that's the point yeah. of it. Yeah. Yeah. Not not that they're necessarily going to be a tough competitor in that space, but it's well, I, I given the fact that they have G Suite, it, they yeah we use G Suite almost, here, so yeah. that would be they have to have something like this, right? So yeah. Yeah. they're either going to buy Slack, which you know they looked at, right, and maybe even yeah. attempt it, or they're going to have to do what Microsoft did, and well, they could buy okay. a competitor, I guess, or or build their own. So yeah. Yeah. it makes sense that they would do something like this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, you said there is a SDK for Mac developers for Duo. That's crazy. Yeah, just came out. What does that mean? Who are they? What is? Huh? Well, because so remember, Duo is Android. So yeah. what what do what the SDK is is an add-on for Android Studio. So the original release was for Android Studio on Windows only, but now it works on uh, Mac or Linux because Android Studio is available on those platforms right. as well. Mm -hmm. So the idea is that Mac developers would write for Duo. Well, Android developers using Macs. Android right. developers exactly. using Macs. Yeah. Okay. That yeah. Makes, uh, so Which I, there okay. are probably a lot. Yeah. yeah. The other thing there is, um, uh, you know, last week, I think that SDK actually shipped a week ago today on Wednesday, I think. Mm -hmm. and I, so we would have mentioned it last week. We did. We mentioned it. Oh, yeah. I, I, intended, or, yeah. I didn't think, you know, I was like, well, you know, look, this isn't something I need to jump on tonight. You know, it's complicated. If you've ever used Android Studio, you know, it's a it's a tangled mess. But um, I was surprised the next morning as some other blogs had published little hands-on things with the emulator. I was like, wow, I'm actually kind of surprised these guys got this thing up and running. Mm -hmm. And then I looked at it and I realized, oh, it's really easy to get this thing up and running. Like literally all you have to do, is you have to install Android uh, Studio because it does rely on the emulator provided by that environment. But the Microsoft SDK, uh, or the Microsoft emulator installs, it's just an EXE. So you just run it, you mm -hmm. install it, and you can run it off the desktop. And it it relies on Android Studio being on the computer, but you don't have to develop an app or anything to use it. You just It just runs. Mm 
Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. this is kind of stealthy. I mean, this is very interesting. And um, tied to what we talked about at the beginning of the show, this is why Microsoft announced this thing back in October. They literally intended for people like you and I and uh, loggers, you know, other influencer types or whatever, yeah. to, to run this thing and be able to use this successfully mm-hmm. and get excited about it. And I, anyone who listens to this show, I think, probably has the tech, technical acumen to do this. It's not complicated. Um, yes, you have to put this hairy Android Studio thing on your computer, but you can bring this emulator up in a window. You can rotate it. You can you can install apps on it, but you can sign in hmm. with your mm-hmm. accounts uh, if you want to in Edge, for example, um, and and see what it looks like and enjoy that uh, inch <laughs> white bar in the middle. It'll make you super productive. Um, can you use any development tools with it too? Like I know you can use Xamarin on Duo, right? Uh, no, I think those are the two right now. And Xamarin, okay. I'm sure, relies on... I have not used it. I've, I've not gotten to Xamarin myself, so yeah. I, ass, I shouldn't assume, but I. They, I ass, Xamarin's they, out there advertising. You can use us for Duo. You can. Like that is true. They're oh, that, pushing yeah, it. True. Yeah. That is true. Yeah. But right, the, the emulator that Microsoft made was for the Android Studio. Yeah. You know, emulating an emulator mm-hmm. environment. So possible. I don't know if Xamarin uses that on mobile or not. Yeah. I, I assume they must. It might be premature to ask, but do you think developers are taking to these platforms? I mean, Microsoft needs to get not just users. Um, in fact, before they get users, they got to get people to write software for it, right? I, I, I mean, so that's a concern because wh- why? You know, <laughs> I, I I suppose the the key here is going to be you you not so much like I have a great new idea for a dual yeah. screen app, right? Right. It's more like I have an app. It's I have in an the app. Google should I make store. it dual screen? exactly? What can I? How yeah. hard is yeah. it to tailor this thing to make it? You know, and maybe really you don't have to. I mean, maybe it just right. occupies one screen, uh, and yep. that's fine. Well, that's that's, that's one thing. They that's say one that, thing it right? Would do. Yeah. yeah, right. Yeah, they yeah. say if you have an app, it'll work mm-hmm. in, in one screen. Yep. Like you, and you don't have to do anything, and it will work on these. But if you really want to make it jazzy and be yeah, able to span right. and all that, then you have to do a few things. Well, I'll give you an example. Well, by there the way, are a lot of huge. calculator apps that have a paper tape because that's a nice thing to see the history of your calc. Yeah, right. Left side calculator, mm-hmm. right side paper yeah. tape is a natural. That's nice too because those screens have the shape of yeah. those things. Yeah, it's you a know, very... so it kind of makes yeah. sense. And if that's an easy um, thing to do, I bet you anybody who has a calculator with a paper tape would, would do it. Uh, yeah. The nice thing about this is it's not something brand new. Um, it's not mm-hmm. some weird Microsoft environments, some Microsoft language, some Microsoft framework. Well, it's yeah. a Microsoft framework. But um, it, it literally is designed to work with the tools Android developers are already using. And you could do nothing, like we said. Or you can – Well, I, I don't know what you would have to do. To, but if you want to separate, you know, have different screens and whatever those things are, that's the trick is how hard is that. But however hard it is, it's still way better than, well, if you want to work on this, you have to do this new thing. Yeah, I think one of the right. things they did was really smart. They just they they built it to work with the thing that everyone's using, and then when the Windows one comes out, it will be the same thing. You can choose between uh, well, using Visual Studio, it's going to be Win32, which mm-hmm. should span WinForms and WPF, UWP or uh, PWA. Yep. So those things should work. You know, I guess we'll yeah. see. Yeah. And if you go to docs.microsoft.com right now and you search for um, Surface Duo specs, I mean, they've got code samples. They've got everything. They've got the APIs up there. uh, Like a lot of stuff's there. Actively pursuing developers. In fact, it's it's so there. I'm a little surprised they didn't discuss Mm -hmm. the developer story back in October. (laughs) Yeah. They didn't just come up with this two weeks ago. No. They were working on this. Yeah. I think they started talking to developers right after... Um, that hardware announcement, like privately, and said, "What do you need from us? Like, what what do you want to hear? What do you want to see?" And then they they, I'm sure, already were yeah. quite well on the way with the APIs and all that. Um, yep. But yeah, there's a web uh, developer angle to this as well, and they're working mm-hmm. with web standards to get there to be some kind of support for these dual screen devices. And I would imagine um, there are uh, popular third party frameworks um, like Flutter, which is cross platform. It, it will be interesting, and this is where the Google part comes in, whether they can um, get the makers of those things to support this type of mm-hmm. device formally as well. Mm-hmm. You know, but right right now it's the micro, you know, you have to use the Microsoft yeah. SDK in, uh, in Android Studio. Right. So February 11th, if you're a developer and you care about this, you want to tune in to the Microsoft 365 Developer Day event that's going to be online. Yeah. And then I'm curious, what else they're going to say at Build? 
right? Because build is in late yeah. May and um, you would think they'd talk more about this there as well. I would assume there would be a little bit about Surface Neo and dual screen windows, I guess we'll call it 10X development, even on yeah. that day long event. Me too. And yeah. uh, and I'm sure, well, I shouldn't be, I'm not sure, but I would imagine we're going to see an SDK before build as well. It seems like yeah. with that device coming out this fall, they, they're going to want developers to get going on that. I think uh, I think they were hinting it might be out by February 11th. Uh, like yeah, that's that makes sense, right? I didn't want to, yeah. yeah. Okay, that makes sense. I know, sense. we shouldn't yep. say for sure, but it seemed like but that's where they're uh, Earlier rather than later, like they're not going to wait till build for something like that. It's, right. it's too important. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, there's a lot going on there. Like I, I think as tech bloggers, we a lot of times just get overly focused on like, oh, it's so cute. It's here, it's small, <laughs> it's got two screens. But then you yeah. got to think about all these other things like what apps right. are going to ship on it. Right. You know, what services is it going to connect to? I really like I Leo's idea about edge device because remember last week yeah. you, you were talking about how Satya recently said something about, you know, should we rename Windows Edge or mm -hmm. something? And it's like they're thinking about yeah, this the, too. Um, uh, Azure Edge. <laughs> right. Like, what if they sorry, call these just... Azure Edge devices? <laughs> like, I mean, like internally from a developer. Well, they, uh, I, they right. do call them edge device, the intelligent thinking. Edge yeah, devices, that right? That is, thinking, that's yeah. the name. Yeah. I mean, the yeah. so Windows, or not Windows, uh, the PC is kind of a specialized tool when you think about it. Uh, it is. Yeah, um, yeah you and you know, I, we all everything. love it, but that's not the world. Right. That's us. Leo, it is yeah. my world. I <laughs> know, it is. <laughs> I, I have a you know, deep-rooted, yeah. long-standing fondness for desktop computing. But, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, I it's like interesting. horses. <laughs> my, my son, who was uh, in doing sales for Twit uh, until uh, last month, when he took off for a, he got bought a one-way ticket to Asia. <laughs> wow. And really? he said, I'll come back. I'm coming back when I'm done. That's rather wow. vague. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but he wanted to continue to do sales from yeah. Asia, you know, which he could sort of do. Yeah. Uh, but you need to access a tool that we have that uh, tells you what the availabilities are and all that stuff. Yeah. And at first, uh, we fig I said, you can, at first, he was going to take his $3,000 MacBook. And I said, you know, it'll get sure. stolen, guarantee you. So <laughs> yeah. don't. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I said, what if you, in something lighter, take an iPad, a keyboard. Uh, you could probably, and we set it up and he said, yeah, I guess I can do it. But he got there and it wasn't quite fast enough mm -hmm. or powerful enough. So he ended up buying a cheap, uh, uh, Acer Swift laptop, yep. uh, like a few hundred bucks in, in Vietnam and is using that. So he still needs to carry a computer with him, right. Yeah. even though he has ubiquitous internet. That's the good yeah. news. Um, so he can get online. He can make phone calls. He can do a lot of that. But he, for some, you know, I guess because of the heavy duty tool that we're providing, mm -hmm. uh, he needs a computer. But I wonder how that's going to change. Mm -hmm. That would require, though, a lot of line of business apps to become lighter weight, become edge apps. Well, and or run in a container, right? That's another way you could do it. I've sort of felt for years that um, something like a Chromebook would solve the need for a lot of people um, yeah. who occasionally needed that big screen, uh, bigger key, you know, real keyboard, whatever. And it doesn't seem like those have taken off in any appreciable way outside of education, um, which, of course, is driven by, you know, the cost and so forth. Yeah, um, my daughter uses a Chromebook. She doesn't. She used mm -hmm. it all through college. She doesn't need anything yeah. more than a Chromebook. I find it so limiting, personally, and I, I really well, tried. Um, here's a funny thing. She wanted to apply for a PR job, and one of the yeah. requirements was to make a PowerPoint presentation. <laughs> And, I told you this yeah. story sometime in the past year. Someone, someone mentioned PowerPoint to my daughter, and she said, what's PowerPoint? Right. So to her credit, Abby knows she's 28. She knows what PowerPoint is. Yeah. And could you, and did it, but uh, she had to borrow a, a Windows laptop to do it. Right, yeah. right. So uh, I guess you could do PowerPoint in uh, the cloud. You could do PowerPoint do online, but I think she it's... wanted to do do it. But I mean, who knows what you'd be app. missing? That's yeah, the, exactly. the problem. Yeah. It's not yeah. clear yeah. how those things line up. Mm -hmm. So business will keep using it as, and that, and you know how long it takes to get rid of that line of business software you just yeah. it just stays and stays and stays yeah. i think end home users probably that's that that time is gone now where you have to have a mm. desktop computer or people still want to buy laptops i mean they call a radio show all the time saying i need to get a laptop <laughs> mm -hmm. yep yep and you say yeah you do yeah <laughs> buy 10 <laughs> the industry needs your help yeah <laughs> yep. well i did I recommend because of you mary joe 
a Surface laptop last weekend. Yeah, I don't think the person would be mad if they had the no, laptop nice three. Thin no, that's, a, that's a beautiful computer. Yeah. Um, let's, is there anything else you want to say about Neo and Duo and then before we take a break? Because uh, next we're going to talk about the hot look. topic of Bing. Yeah. But like you're going to see why we're talking about it. Bing's back, yeah, you'll baby. Enjoy the <laughs> I like my it's Bing back. wallpaper, my Bing picture <laughs> Yeah, of the that's day. really pretty. Yeah. It's always nice. That's actually one of the nicest things about the Microsoft launcher, right? You get that different wallpaper yeah. every day. Yeah. It's nice. Yep. Uh, I'm using it on Linux, but that's, <laughs> okay. you know, today. Of course so. you are. A nature park <laughs> in Guatemala. It's quite beautiful. It's my favorite wallpaper. We, when you do, though, in Linux, you don't get all the little Bing links that you can click inside the Bing picture. Yeah. Day, which, frankly, is a benefit. You get something like that in Windows 10, too. I booted up the computer today, yeah. and there was a picture of Mars on the, mm -hmm. yeah. on the lock screen. That was the really lock nice. screen. I have Bing wallpaper on the, on the lock screen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Hey, let me tell you, for uh, people who are in the business of protecting their company and their networks about a really clever idea. You've heard us talk about honeypots for years. In fact, I think the very first or second Security Now was about honeypots. The idea is you put something on your network that looks valuable and doesn't look vulnerable, looks valuable, looks like something like payroll information or social security numbers. But you make you give it a name that makes it look like, oh, you know, and then you watch and see if it gets attacked. That's one way, probably the best way to find out if there's a hacker on your network browsing around. I have a very easy way to make honeypots, to put them on your network. Very affordable, very powerful. It's called the Canary. We use one here. It comes from Thinkst. In fact, you can find out more at uh, canary.tools slash twit. So let me just show you the interface uh, to our Canary. We have a Canary sitting right next to me. Uh, the nice thing about the Canary is it, it, it's sitting on the network, but it can be anything you want. In this case, it looks like a Synology NAS, you know. And then I also, oh, look, somebody scanned the port on the backup NAS. So that's an incident. Now, this was an older incident, but it was an interesting case, actually. That was back in August. What, what was scanning it? And then I saw, and then the IP address was a local IP address, even more scary. In fact, there's 14 incidents. By the way, I love this feature of the Canary. It rolls up the incidents into a single actionable report, so you don't get thousands of pings, which just tempts you to, you know, ignore it. We, I, I Russell, who also uh, is on the Canary and is our IT manager, uh, immediately figured it out. He he went and looked at what's on that port. It was weirdly, it was a, um, a another, uh, you know, desktop NAS device that was scanning our network. We immediately disconnected it. I don't know why it thought it was a good idea to do that, but it was really great to get that information. Now, the nice thing is this is set up to look like a Synology, but I can configure it, and, and you see I've turned on FTP, the login on a web server, and SSH. The reason you do that, I want to know. When people uh, log in, I get a notification. This is the login. This is the name they use and the password. That's really valuable. When you get a, a honeypot alert that says they use this person's name to log in, that tells you a lot about what the... Hacker knows the advanced persistent threat. You can make these canaries be anything you want. Anything from a Windows uh, share to, uh, let's see, here's the device personality, and you pick one. Windows Server 2012, Windows Server 2000. You can make it an XP desktop. See, wouldn't it would be smart to make it a file share on Windows XP. They'd go, oh, these idiots. They just left a Windows XP on the network. IIS, uh, Linux, uh, I have a, a, a Synology NAS, VMware, HP, uh, ILO server. You could have a Joomla server, Cups. You can even have a SCADA device. You can have a Siemens SCADA device on there. And the thing is, you know in your business what you want it to be. You could choose the Mac prefix. It can be, in this case, of course, I'm going to make it Synology, but you can make it a Mac that is absolutely looks like a device from those manufacturers. You can turn on a Christmas tree of services. You could say what the file shares are. This is a fantastic tool. And it really is a great way to, to find out if there's somebody on your network. Ideally, you never hear from your canary.
You see, I also have some Canary tokens. Once you have a Canary, you can put unlimited tokens. Those are files sitting anywhere on the network, on hard drives, in your boss's office, or anywhere, that are, again, attractive and will ping you the minute somebody tries to open. This is a P what says it's a PDF with the title Payroll Information. <laughs> as soon as somebody tries to open that, I'm going to get a notification. Somebody tried to open your Canary. Oh, that's awesome. It'll look like anything you want. It's by the way, it's just a little thing. It's sitting right on my desk here. I'll show you. This is it's like a uh, just like a little uh, IoT device or something, but it's not. It's actually a very sophisticated network device. It can look like a router, a switch, a NAS server, anything you want. The company behind this has been in the security game for two decades. They've trained companies, militaries, governments on how to break into networks. They use what they know about how hackers behave to create these canaries. They're deployed all over the world in some of the biggest companies and the smallest companies. Every company you've heard of. In fact, if you go to canary.tool slash love, you can see all the tweets from CISOs, you know, uh, from CIOs, from IT guys about how much they love their canary. All seven continents. That means there's one on Antarctica or two or three. And they're very affordable. You, you get as many canaries as you want. You're not really buying the canaries. In fact, that's nice because you get upgrades, support, and maintenance. And if something happens to your canary during the year, they just send you a new one, no questions asked. Sample pricing, uh, we have uh, five canaries, 7500 bucks a year. That includes the console, the upgrades, the support, the maintenance. I have to say, though, if you use the word TWIT, T-W-I-T, in the How Did You Hear About Us box, you're going to get 10% off. And not just for the first year, but forever. So that's a big savings. We know you'll love the things to Canary. You'll want to put them all over the network. Some big banks have hundreds, small companies, just a few. There is a two-month money-back guarantee, two months. So you can really give it a try and see if you like it. On average, it takes companies 191 days to realize somebody's in their network. How long did it take Marriott to figure out the SPG logins had been hacked and there were people they, five years somebody was wandering around that network sony seven months so this is why you need a canary it's a honeypot that's easy to set up powerful you won't once you once you start using one you won't ever want to stop we don't certainly canary.tools slash twit again use the word twit to get 10 percent off for life uh, back to the show, Paul Therott, Mary Jo Foley. We're talking about Windows. Let's move on to the most important product in Microsoft's portfolio. Today they're the going end. to announce what? a new segment we're going to have on the show called yeah. the Bing Controversy of the Week. The Bing Controversy <laughs> of the Week. <laughs> nice. I'm going, no, to, uh, okay. I'm going to bing the bong for that one. That's a good... <laughs> bing the bong. Bing the bong. Oh, my bong's right. not working. It broke. You oh, bing bongers. There's nothing worse than a broken bong. <laughs> is, is bong the past tense of bing? Yeah, I bonged. I bonged. What it. have you bonged? <laughs> what have you bonged? What today? hath God bonged? <laughs> uh, what is going on with bing that it All would right. be a story? Okay. So, you know the way we just talked about. Neo and Duo, yeah. and there's more to it than just a pretty piece of hardware. Yeah. There's more to Bing than just a second-tier search engine, right? Microsoft's doing a lot of changes to Bing that I don't think people understand thoroughly. Um, so Bing is going to stay a web search engine, as far as we know. That, And, you know, it's, it's an okay web search engine. It's definitely, for me, not yielding results that are as good as Google, especially on mobile and local devices for me. But Microsoft is changing Bing into more of an intranet web search engine. And I don't think people get that. When they announced at Ignite a couple of years ago that they were changing uh, how they're handling search to make search more universal across Windows and Office, the other place it's universal now is Bing. So if you're signed into your Microsoft account and you use Bing as your search engine, you get results that look totally different than just a regular web search engine. Like when you search for a document, uh, your your documents in your company come up, right? So uh, you actually, um, I think, uh, is this Microsoft account or is it uh, like an Azure Active Directory account? Oh, I think it's, uh, like a, wor I think it's, it's a work just, account, isn't it? Um, I think it's Microsoft. Is it Maybe a work right. account only? You might be right. Um, I think it's. I don't think it's Microsoft account, but anyway. But so it's so it's your your Microsoft work account. But now I'm curious. 
Okay, yeah. try it. Try I, I it with so. a look, yeah, try it with yeah. other one too. Um, but the idea they're trying to get to is Bing is a productivity tool, and just like Surface Neo and Duo are productivity tools, they're trying to make the case if you use Bing and sign into your Microsoft, well, I won't say Microsoft account, your work account through Microsoft, that you will get much more interesting results and relevant results. You'll get your documents, your people, all the things we just right. talked about being on Surface Neo and Duo, right? So I think these two things are very much aligned. And I don't think people quite understand what we mean when we say Bing for business or Microsoft Search and Bing. Like you just are like, yeah, it's still Bing. It's not. It's a really, really different experience. Just try it sometime and you'll see how different the results are when you do this. It, it it'll, It's crawling basically your local machine. And if you're connected with an Active Directory and the permissions are allowed, it's crawling your internal company directory too. So this is huge. And I don't think people get how huge this is. It's also the reason Microsoft did that really bad thing last week. And they said, <laughs> we're going to be hijacking Chrome browsers. I yes. keep expecting them to retract that. And they have. They have not. I went back yeah. at them today oh, and I said, this. no, does it work? So it, it only works with uh, my work active, like my. Okay. No, yeah. And it is Your different. Work. It is in there like the Microsoft yeah. search results. Yep. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool, right? So, but what they did last week is still terrible. They said if you're an Office 365 Pro Plus user starting in February in certain countries, we're going to just forcibly install an, a, an extension to your Chrome browser that has Microsoft Search and Bing, and it's going to switch your search engine. And I went back to them this week and I said, I don't know if you've looked at the count of how many people are fighting you on this on user voice and on GitHub. Yeah, it's crazy. Right. <laughs> but like people think this is terrible. People are blocking them now because they're in, in anticipation of this happening. Wow. Somebody even entered this, uh, the, the new Office 365 Pro Plus extension with Bing in the Wikipedia directory of um, hijacking browsers. Yeah. Right. Yeah. right. Well, <laughs> yeah. But it is. It is, right? It's I mean, it, is. Right. it is. Here, here's no, the real problem. With the, it, it's funny because the people who are outraged are, are users. The right. people who should be outraged are IT administrators. Why You're on kidding. earth is Microsoft bypassing them to install this thing on other on their users' computers? Now, I'm sure there are group policies, yada yada there yada. There are. Can you can block whatever, it. But, yeah. But I, it, this should, is it a should, strange should, end run. Shouldn't be opt out. It should be opt in. I agree. Mean, that's it, yes, nuts. and it's actually not strictly necessary. If you go to Bing.com and search, I just did it. It works fine. You don't need a browser add-in. Yeah, they're trying to they're trying to expose more people to search. This is why they're doing it. This new intranet yeah. search in Bing. This is the reason they're hijacking the browser. Well, in other words, you go to the address bar and you search right. for something. Now it will yeah. come up because this thing made Bing the default browser. I, I exactly. assume that's that's why, why. But that is why. Yep. Yeah. So it's a really overly heavy handed way to try to get people yeah. to say, Hey, look at this cool thing. We're doing a Bing. This isn't going to work guys. It's, it's going to backfire, but they're not backing down so far. I, yeah, like I, I said, I rechecked expected today. to hear yep. before today that they were going to Me too. Re rethink this and there's Me been nothing. Too. No, I, yeah. I keep asking. I've asked, I've asked about three times so far. Like, are you guys really going to stick with this and not, Make it this out. is a tough one because, <laughs> you know, this this speaks to the moral authority problem that they no longer have if they do stuff like this. You know, I know. Um, people will I, remember this. Uh, they may I not know, even though it never the impacted any of them. And yeah, you know? and they don't yep. under, really understand what it's doing. And they're going to say we were bing jacked. Yeah. And it's <laughs> yes, it's, even though, right, even though what they have is an Office 365 home <laughs> account that they right. and they're using yeah. a, right. a, a Edge anyway. It doesn't <laughs> you know, matter whatever, because but, the reputation yeah. damage. Yep. Perfect. I know it's, stupid. it's, it's really stupid. bad. It's terrible. Yeah. Um, I just am really surprised they're sticking with it. But the reason they are is I don't think, again, people understand how much they are willing to do to push this new vision of search. By the um, way, the search thing is cool. It, it's, it's really cool. nice. It's a great feature. And <laughs> it is. doing this is wrong. It's it is. I agree. I agree. You know, you know, when I had a clue that they were really, um, going to do something different with search was when Yusuf Mehdi's title changed. This was like right around the time of Ignite. Yep. He he was corporate vice president of Modern Life and Devices. So Modern Life is all this prosumer stuff they're doing. Then they added right. into his title search. So now he's corporate vice president of Modern Life search and devices. Like this is so, very core to their mission here. 
Yeah. I, w- I wonder, um, you know, uh, we were talking earlier about, and Mary Jo mentioned the office.com experience that you get yeah. up on the web and the office app on wherever and, and how it's kind of the same view. I talked about the extension and so forth. Mm-hmm. It's not hard to imagine this thing being extended to consumers where you can search for Bing and I, you know you worked on a document called whatever it was called and you type yep. that into the Bing search thing and what comes yep. up is your document. Um, I mean, that already great, happens to you in, in Windows 10, right? If you use the search yes, engine there. but I mean there. right from the browser, right? It's yeah. kind of a, because people spend a lot of time in the browser. Like it's kind of a they neat do. thing to put search where people search. You know, we, yeah. Microsoft spent so much time trying to get internet search into the start menu. Mm-hmm. It, it, even when you think about it, it almost makes more sense to put file search, you know, OneDrive search, whatever you want to call mm-hmm. it, uh, into the web browser. Because I bet more people yep. go there to look stuff up. Why not Me go too. to, you know, again, go to where people are going. Yep. But the way they're doing it, not a good yeah. way. <laughs> uh, maybe maybe Google will integrate it into their search engine. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but I, how much do you bet this is somehow tightly integrated into Duo and Neo? Oh mm-hmm. yeah, of course, mm-hmm. of course. Once you when you control the launcher or the you know the yep the operating system, whatever. Um, yeah, of course. Yep. I mean, it's already hard to switch your search engine in Windows 10, like it's, I mean, when you're using Credge, right? But yes, right. They it's do make tricky that to find it, but you can do yeah, it. You so can do you it. could see you can. Yeah. And I think legally they have to let you do it, but it can make it hard to find. So if you buy one of these devices, you're yeah. unlikely as a normal user to switch it. Right, right, right. And, and right. So, I mean, even, um, I don't know how this would work exactly, but I'm sure if you went into the, Android settings interface and you change your default search engine to Google, which you, mm-hmm. which a lot of people would, if you're yep. using the Microsoft launcher and you're doing search from that search bar there, yep. you're still going to get Bing. Bing. Just yeah, Just like you do. if you're using Edge yep. and you change mm-hmm. the search engine to Google, if you do a search off of that default new tab page, it's yep. still going to go to Bing. It doesn't let matter me, what let this me is. That's for Every response. time I use Bing mm-hmm. by accident or whatever, I know it's Bing. I It's not as good <laughs> yeah. as Google. Right. So... It's not like if if it were if it were just as good as Google, yeah, or better. There, you could even yep. be better than Google. Oh, we, right. The tip would be switch to this, but then it wouldn't yeah. be um, a big deal because I would be improving things. But one of the right. th- one of the but ways they can make it. Be- so <laughs> first of all, if you're using Bing, you have no idea that it's any worse, <laughs> right? I mean, if you just right. if you just use Bing, you wouldn't know anyway. But more to the point, uh, you could make the argument that um, if they we'll call it OneDrive search, I guess for lack of a better term, mm-hmm. file search. Um, if they integrate that into Bing, I mean, if that's one of the things you're searching for a lot, it does kind of, it makes it better in that way. I mean, it's, yeah, it's one of the way, you know, because Bing does, obviously Bing has certain things that it does well, but, mm-hmm. um, this is just a neat, I think this is a neat feature. I mean, if you use, yeah. um, a web browser for, you know, productivity purposes or whatever, if you're storing your stuff up in, if you're an Office 365 Pro Plus customer up in OneDrive for Business or SharePoint or whatever, or if you know, in the future, I guess, with Duo and Neo and maybe mm-hmm. um, just with Credge in, in general, um, OneDrive, being able to search that stuff from the web I know. or search for is that's actually pretty it powerful. It's Should I switch to Bing uh, for all my no, searches? No, Leo. God, no. Okay. Stop. <laughs> so, you know, part, so two things about why the results aren't, quote, as good for us. One is, your results get better the more you use a search engine. Uh, it gets more okay. tailored to you, right? Okay. And the more people who do a search <laughs> in a search that, engine. Though? How do we know that's true? <laughs> yeah, no one uses <laughs> what, it that much. Everything's so. about machine learning these days, right? Yeah, sure. like, yeah. And, but also, the more people who use a search engine, the results get better, right? Because it's a larger pool of people searching something. They and so Microsoft the results rewards. Are bigger. I mean, that's something to look into. You get your earned <laughs> points uh, for using Bing, and you can yeah. use those points to buy things like. Uh, yep. Xbox Live Gold uh, passes and Amazon gift cards and whatever. So yeah, yeah. Okay. Does Google pay you to use them? Well, it's there's an opportunity, <laughs> honestly. I think a lot of people would stop using Google. There's certainly a, a movement among yep. Yep. the people I know to DuckDuckGo and StartPage and other um, non google searches. If yeah. Bing were, you know, if, if you felt like the results from Bing were as high quality as Google, minus the Google ads and all so that. So, by the way, Maybe all three it. of us in, in the next 72 hours are going to hear from people who will insist that Bing, Bing is just as good, if yeah. not better, than Google. You know, yeah. And so right. people have different experiences. Well, I'm going to, um, as an experiment, I will switch everything to Bing this week. I, 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 
<laughs> I've done, no, I've tried this. I mean, look, I, I, I know I've tried, I've tried too. Tried. Yeah. You know what? There are things it's really good for. Um, if you're like me and you do a lot of searches for Microsoft orgs and, and plans and yeah. product yeah. announcements, it's a, of course, it's great for that. Yeah. Like, it's awesome for that. <laughs> if you but are you know where it's really watcher. bad in New York? In, in New yeah. York, when I have it on my phone, like a lot of times still, even now, all these years later, if I search for a restaurant or a place, the, a lot of times the info is out of date. Like a new place that's open, it's not listed or the hours are wrong and they're not wrong in Google. So right, right. there, there is a, a tangible difference for me in local searches using my phone. There is. I mean, if you're looking for photos of supermodels, it's pretty good. <laughs> or so other things. There's that. <laughs> Yeah. I remember having this conversation with Microsoft years ago now where they were saying, you know, we obviously they look at the types of things people are searching for. And for some reason, celebrity stuff was a big deal. So they're like, well, we'll, yeah. we'll tailor this thing for celebrities. Yeah. So if you're looking for celebrities, you get these nice pages with, mm -hmm. you know, nice layouts and everything. And it's like, OK, but <laughs> what if I'm. What if I'm just trying to get stuff done here? Like, uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, that's you nice. Know I mean, I, I, I know that's a use. You know, they're trying to make it not just celebrities have nice pages. Like I, they did one for me. I don't know why oh, they did one for me. Oh, what's your Bing page? <laughs> no, just type into Bing, Mary Jo Foley, and you'll see what oh. they did for me. It's kind of cool. Like they, my whole bio comes up on the right and, and my affiliations, my Twitter handle, like all this stuff gets organized for me automatically. Nice. Nice. So why? So I'm sure they did one for you, Leo. Like they're, do, they're doing them just to try to get more like, like the results so I, to surface. I, yeah, because Leo's I signed there. into my organization, I learned that Paul Throt is an administrator, <laughs> and <laughs> here's his email address, and I can chat with him. Oh, really? Wow. Mm -hmm. No, but if I do you with just a, as a regular bank, Paul Throt, you have the same thing. Your your page comes so you're up. Your about this knowledge graph on the right. Is yeah, it, yeah, so there's like you know your your Wikipedia page is listed. Your Facebook link is there. All this stuff is there. Um, mm -hmm. Twit is kind of low on the page, I'm afraid. <laughs> I think they're still populating this, but yeah. it's, you know, it's, that's useful because it surfaces information they think you, you would want to find, um, when you look for a certain person more easily. Yeah. They really push the radio show as, mm. like, and I guess that makes sense. Got yeah. a nice link to the Delphi three super Bible. That's yeah, good. That's important. nice. That good? See, look yeah. at that. You yeah. don't get that that's on Google. <laughs> Um, yeah, People who search for me also search for Mary Jo Foley, Steve Gibson, and Leo Laporte. Yeah, makes yeah, sense. This is the the start page search, which is an anonymized Google search, mm -hmm. and that has Twit very high up. Mm -hmm. Huh? Startpage.com. Yeah. Hmm. yeah, start page is an interesting <laughs> privacy story. They use the Google right. index, but they don't. But they don't do any of the. Yeah, it, it's an anonymized Google index, and then the result, yeah. which is really nice has a link that is you can anonymous view of that page so it kind of does a little mm -hmm. yeah uh, google IP does the hiding. same thing oh, like do? i, oh, I okay. just searched myself and i'm getting a similar page i don't know who did it first well, but google does similar. the knowledge graph they that they've yeah. been doing that yeah. for ages and that okay. they get it from wikipedia and a variety of sources yeah. so they yeah do that, yeah yeah, that yeah, yeah. they pull it together right yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. they do that for yeah. as many people as they can yeah. yeah so yeah i mean but otherwise you know um, I think Bing is right in, uh, or Microsoft's right in doing what they're doing with Bing. It's like, okay, you did it as much as you could to make this a web web search engine. You could you couldn't catch Chrome. You're not going to catch Chrome. So make do something a little different. Be an intranet yep. search engine. Just jam it down in their throats, whether they want it or not. Yeah, the jamming the throat thing. It's like, okay, guys. And Google's going to hire a Mark Penn, and they'll have like a <laughs> Bing Man ad or whatever. <laughs> Oh, man. Well, there's yeah. an opportunity now. I think Google is more and more, people are more and more upset with Google. The mistake yeah. Microsoft yeah. Could, will make is to make itself as annoying as Google. Exactly. Um, Something just talked behind me. I don't, I don't know, know what that was. Uh, it was, it was, it was your friend Alexa telling you to stop talking. I think it was some Google device telling me that. <laughs> yeah, Frank, Frank Shaw. Hey. Frank Shaw, hey. coming yeah. out of your I'm, speaker. I'm paying attention. <laughs> you knew they were in my office. <laughs> Uh, we're getting ready for the analyst call Paul any minute now. Just uh, <laughs> you guys are busy with the podcast, right? Okay, yeah, we're going live. Okay, we're going live. <laughs> yeah, we'll wait. We'll wait. Yeah. Anyway, that's all I have to say about Bing for today. That's all. Okay. Bing. I still I look. There's still time um, 
for them to do Hopefully the right thing. Yeah. yeah. Back down. This does impact a very small slice of the Office 365 user base right now. And if you're a consumer, you don't have to yeah. worry about it. Um, but even right. as a commercial customer, um, if you, I, uh, I always forget the na exact names of these things, but it's like small. I think I have what I have what's called business Office 365 business premium. Yeah, that's what I have. I have business. And then there's premium. a I don't know what the lower end one is called basics or something, but those are not I impacted. Think, it, it literally, sorry. Uh, it, oh wait, really? They're not impacted? No, this is 365 Pro Plus only. All oh, right, that's right. So you have to have yeah. that where you download the apps. Right? Yeah, I'm surprised it's the the IT and support people aren't the ones that really <laughs> make. They're the ones who are really mad. You know what? Right they will now. be when it happens. <laughs> They already are. They're, but they're, when, it, when like, does it happen? Starts in mid-February. That's yeah, when you're going to hear the howls. They're not paying attention. But when they, I know. when they, when that starts happening, they say, "What the hell?" I know. Yep. 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 Now, uh, I guess the one little caveat we should mention here too is, as an end user, if this thing is auto deployed to your computer, you're using Chrome. They change everything. Um, you can switch back to Google. Yeah, of course. As a user, like you yeah. could just do. It. I know. Well, of course, but I mean, you know, they're not. But you know where? Your browser. Where? I mm -hmm. believe you have to do it in the extension. Oh. That Microsoft oh, is geez. pushing to you. Oh. Yeah. Oh, really? You can't even uninstall it. No. Oh, I don't like you like have that. to go in there to switch your. I believe I because I was reading all you their stuff. You have to interact with the malware to disable yeah. the malware. Exactly. Yep. Just just put in the last four digits of your social, and everything will be exactly. fine. Exactly. And your mother's maiden name, and you're good, good to go. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Anyway, Do it. so good idea, badly executed, Microsoft. Yep. Hmm. There's still time. Yeah, there there's still time. time. But it's the clock is faith. running. The clock is running. Yeah, it is. I really oh, swear boy. to God, I thought by now Microsoft would have said, "Oh yeah, yeah." No, Me too. I thought they yeah, do like it like someone, Friday someone at Someone higher up at Microsoft is like, wait, what are we doing? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And fix to say no. But it yeah. hasn't happened. It hasn't happened. Yeah. Windows 10 time. So we've had a couple of months off uh, from Ad Duplex. And in fact, somebody uh, emailed me and said, hey, what's going on with these guys? <laughs> so I emailed them because I know Alan over there. And uh, he was just taking some time off of the, over the holidays and didn't think anyone would notice. But anyway, they're oh. back and uh, they have their latest... Uh, Windows 10 usage share data, which I always find very interesting. Um, and the the key takeaway there is that the latest version of Windows 10, which is 1909, is now on 15% of Windows 10 PCs out in the world. 1903, which is the most popular version, is on 53.4%. And so between the two of them, where is this data? Da, 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 da. Yeah, the two releases of Windows 10 that came out last year are now on over two thirds of all the PCs running Windows 10. And so, you know, when you think about the original goal for Windows as a service and uh, Microsoft's dream that we'll all be running, you know, the latest version, blah blah blah. It's kind of, you know, they're they're getting there. I mean, that's that's mm -hmm. not horrible. So that's kind of interesting. And then they also had some related uh, Surface usage data. I'm always fascinated by this too because if you look like the top ten. Surface devices in use by usage, right? The top, I think the first six are tablet form factor devices. Mm. Um, all mm. of them, various versions of Surface Pro, except number three, which is Surface Go, which is on mm. over 14% of all uh, surfaces out in the world. In the bad news department, uh, the Surface devices that I care about the most, like Surface Laptop, Surface Book, you know, are like way down in the list, like unfortunately. Mm. Uh, so I guess if, I think if you add up all the Surface laptop versions, it's I mean it's not even as good as like Surface three. <laughs> like, oh which wow! Is really? Out. Really? Yeah, it's wow! Crazy. Like they they really just aren't out there in any appreciable numbers. Um, and we'll see how that changes. You know, uh, Microsoft's going to announce their earnings today, uh, and this will be the earnings for the quarter where those new devices all came out. So remember last quarter they released Surface Laptop three and Surface Pro X and Surface Pro seven. So we'll see what the we, we're not going to get sales numbers, but right. we'll see what the revenues look like. Um, I assume it will be somewhere between one and two billion, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. which I know is a wide range. But uh, the higher that number is, the better. You yeah. know, the quarter. But. It should be a good quarter because it's the hol it's so. the one where holiday sales were in it. Yep. So yeah, that's right. Yep, so Q it's Q two for them, right? Fiscal Q2, uh, I think. Q, Q2, that's right. Yep. Yep. Yeah, fiscal quarter two. Yep. Yep. For what was this? We're in fiscal 2021. 
No, I guess. Uh, it's 2020. We- 2020. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> Fiscal second quarter. So. Yeah, yeah. Then let's see. Since we last talked, there's been a new insider build, uh, which has absolutely nothing new in it. So let's talk about that for 15 or 20 yeah. minutes. Um, <laughs> well, yeah. so the weird thing there, of course, was the, the insider guys announced that they're not able to bring the promised PWA to market, right? So they were making an insider app right. as a PWA. Yeah, they were. Yeah. Um, I'm. I don't. <laughs> I don't understand why. I know. I mean, I'm I mean, not sure. I, I if have they a feeling just decided... they're lacking uh, some expertise in <laughs> web development or something because I don't think what they're doing is. Uh, yeah. Uh, you know, I, I, couldn't be yeah. done with PWA. But. I don't. I don't. I wasn't quite clear why they were doing a PWA other than just proof of concept of PWAs, but. <laughs> Yep. This is just a little great. I think they're just trying to do something fun. and Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But they're not now, so oh well. <laughs> yep. It does. Uh, yeah, a lot of people saw PWA in headlines and were like, oh, my God, is Microsoft giving up on PWA? Like, oh, no, 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 no. The next one, though, I don't know if you saw this yesterday. Um, mm-hmm. Microsoft put out a cumulative update for 1909 and 1903 that, Mostly seems to fix all the problems people were having with Search and File Explorer. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I'm only aware of it because <laughs> they Raph. referred to <laughs> they refer right they referred to the feature incorrectly. Um, yeah. They called yeah. it what they call it Quick View or Quick Access. Yeah. <laughs> which is yep. Quick Access yep. is a view in File Explorer. It's not the right. search feature. Yeah. But anyway, it's out. It's it was. I guess this was in release preview for like a day. If Raf, <laughs> I was watching Raf on Twitter yesterday, and he was like, "Yeah, it was in release preview for a day, and now they're rolling it out to people as a yeah. non. Uh, what do they call these? Non-obligatory CU. Um, so you can take it. Non-obligatory CU. <laughs> like it doesn't. Wow. It's not forced on you, but it's it's okay. kind of just out there as if you want to download this, you can, but you don't have to. It's because it's not um, a security related one. Yeah. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. It's more just fixes, right? Right. So it's out but there. It's, this if has you been want a problem it. for a long time, I think. Right? It's because it's in. What both specifically those was it? Was it? I saw like some people were seeing a gray box when they were doing search. I've never experienced it. Yeah. Me so. neither. I haven't either. Yeah. Hmm. Anyway, it supposedly is mostly, or if not completely fixed with this cumulative update. <laughs> and the fact that this <laughs> is that actually what it what says. It's mostly, if not completely well, fixed. <laughs> well, it was so vague. The, the way they worded this was really vague. I mean, the vague. person that wrote this didn't even know what the feature in File Explorer was called. So you have to have a little bit of skepticism here. I mean, like, um, we think we found that's, the that's bug. Alarming. It might be but fixed. Maybe we did. Maybe we didn't. Hey, see, how, see how this works. Yeah. Yeah. Does not inspire <laughs> confidence. It's uh, non-obligatory. Right. <laughs> That's such a great term. Non-obligatory. No, they have another name for it. I'm not using the right word. No, I wish that. I wish that. I wish that was the name. That's fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, that's all I had to say about the CU. <laughs> See you later. What else we got? See you later on that. Microsoft is going to bring Edge. Tab yeah. management. To it's Chrome. interesting how this has gotten a lot of news because you know one of the promises that Microsoft made when they adopted Chromium was that they were going to give back, and and they've given back in a thousand small ways, which we don't really see, but they've talked about things they're going to add to Chromium, like better scrolling, uh, better touch support, uh, more accessibility features, you know, things that they had been working on for the old Edge, and it looks like now they're going to be moving. Um, some some of the tab management features from Edge back to Chromium. So Chrome and whatever, mm-hmm. whatever other browsers use Chromium can benefit from this as well. So that's actually, it's, it's cool. Yeah. It's nice. And I'm sure Google will never pull the plug on them. It's all fine. It's good. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, so you can submit it, then it has to be merged in. Is it merged in? Yeah, yeah they were submitted, I think. Is, or this was submitted. Let's see. Blah, blah, blah. Following, you can submit. I mean, anybody can submit stuff. Mm. But I mean, it's good. I'm glad Microsoft's giving back. That's actually so. Yeah. The way this worked was a Chromium engineer requested that oh. Microsoft add this uh, feature, so mm. they sent it in. Oh, that's good. Yeah, nice, very yeah. nice. We like that feature. Nice. Would you 
mind just yeah. <laughs> come on over. No, it's a cool. One. It's it's kind of a differentiator, but um, yeah. can you bring it over? They've never had. In fact, this is one reason Steve Gibson refuses to switch from Firefox. They've never had kind of good tab management. Good. Mm. So I think maybe this is oh. something they needed. I don't know. It's good. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Nice. Um, a major USB. Oh, this one. I'm sitting in yeah. front of one of the affected ThinkPads. Uh -oh. This one was a little nerve-wracking at first because it affected so many ThinkPads. Yeah. And I was thinking, my God, what if there's some endemic hardware problem? But that, but that's what's be weird because there is a software fix. So the USB-C ports. It's, what, what they're saying working. is it's a firmware update. They screwed yeah. something up and yeah. it's it, apparently this fixes it. But you have to install two things. Um, one's a firmware update, one's a driver update. You have to do them in a particular order. It's way better just if you use a ThinkPad, you know they have something called... Um, uh, Lenovo Vantage, um, and that's one. That's the tool used to do driver updates. That will do that in the right order. So just use that. Make sure you're up to date, and you should be good to go. But it's a weird bug because I guess people had their computer for about a year, and then suddenly it stopped working. Mm. And that, and I just it just sounds like something. It could something that could be horrible, but apparently this does fix it. So cross your fingers. Hope for the best. <laughs> I'm sure it's fine. But. I don't think I've seen it yet. You would know if you saw it. <laughs> because right. of some of the, yeah, it throws up crazy dialogues and mm. um, you get all Only these failures. Only on ThinkPads. Yeah, on think, think all ThinkPads. Yeah, yeah, right. it's, an, it's a ThinkPad. So I have a 470, I'm looking at a 470S right now, which is on the list of affected ThinkPads. If you look at the list, it is basically, basically every ThinkPad that's been years. released. Yeah. yeah, the past um, two or three years. But yeah. now maybe, I. by the way, it's running Linux. Uh, but maybe um, maybe I already have the firmware update because, you know, I, whenever there are firmware updates, I apply them. Mm. Did, were they were pushed out. Were they pushed out automatically? Uh, I don't know how it would work. How do you do that on Linux or do you have to go into Windows to do it? No, the beauty the beauty part nowadays mm. is that all those firmware updates get pushed to Linux, too. So, you, oh, you then you should it. probably have it. This yeah, happened have it. Yeah. a week or two ago. Yeah, because yeah. I haven't seen it. I've literally seen nothing. So Okay. I don't know how this would expose itself in, in Linux, but if you're running Windows, it's really you obvious. You get a firmware update. It's part of the Windows update. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, it's not shy about telling you this is something wrong. Is, you got something wrong. This is terrible. <laughs> oh, my God. What are you doing? Did you just plug something into that? That doesn't work. <laughs> huh. That's weird. Yeah. Um, PremiumOutlook.com users have a problem, too. What's, yeah. what's that story? So yeah. if your Outlook.com premium or the ad-free Outlook.com subscription customer, as of February 28th this year, you no longer can use personalized email addresses unless you are also subscribing to Office 365 Home or Personal. So there are a lot of people, I, I don't know how many, I can't say a lot, one. but no, there's <laughs> I, this, more, more this, than one this is me. because I've heard from more than one. Yep. <laughs> uh, there's... A number of people who do this, they subscribe to Outlook.com Premium or the ad free, and they don't have an Office 365 subscription, but they have personalized email addresses that they have created because that was You're a benefit of Outlook.com Premium. Yep. Yeah. You're going to lose it. So your your yep. best option is subscribe to Office 365 Home or Personal, I guess, because then you can continue to use that feature. Right. Um, if you don't. But if you how, don't, I don't remember, how much was I like premium? I don't even remember. It was yeah, I forget how expensive. much it was. Too. No, it wasn't all that much. Um, but yeah, and you're going to need Office 365. Right. And Outlook.com, I still get ads all the time, uh, you know, ups, upgrade to the premium right. version. Um, but if you right. do upgrade to the premium version after February 28th, you will no longer get the option to get a personalized email address. That feature is going away for new subscribers. Yep. Just I still hear to from the people wise. who want to. Um, <laughs> uh, they they wanted to use this, but they don't want to use GoDaddy, <laughs> and it's I like, know. well, yeah, that's the service they're using. So it's like, well, yeah. do you think they're going to switch? You know, and it's like, I I think what I think is they don't want to do this. <laughs> so they don't. They want to, They totally uh, don't want to be in that business. Yeah, right? and they've so, they've been communicating that for years. Like they've been getting yep. people off of using Microsoft as a domain registrar. That's I mean, like something uh, they don't want to do. The low cost Office 365, the lowest cost Office 365 commercial account type, whose name I'm butchering. I think it's called, it might be, I said before it might be business, it's not business basics, but whatever no, that is. they changed the name. The That's why you're. Business Essentials. 
Business Essentials. Is, right. That's yeah, right. Five dollars a month. So yeah. uh, they do custom domains. You don't get the downloadable Office apps. Uh, you get the cloud stuff. So you yeah. get a terabyte of OneDrive uh, for business yeah. storage. Sixty bucks a year, uh, and you can do a custom domain. Um, That's what I have. I think. I think. I've, it's been a while since I've done this, but I. I think they will work with any registrar. I don't think you have to. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I shouldn't say I'm not 100 percent sure, but I can't imagine they're, they're locking that to a single registrar. Mm -hmm. So if that's super important to you, and all you care about is like the webmail, or you can get, you obviously can get it on a mobile device or whatever. Um, you know, maybe that's an option. Yeah. I just get Office 365 Home or personal. I know, it's fairly cheap. Yeah. All yep. right. You know what this means? It's time to talk about Windows 7. Yep. You didn't think this was going away, did you? <laughs> it's never going away. Yeah. Never. There is, well, I thought it was funny that there's going to be another security patch to Windows 7. Yeah. Yeah, we should get this, that out of the way. So um, if you were this, still running Windows 7. Sorry. sorry is, it, is it technically a security patch? No. no it it's a like bug a, fix. And like that's why it's even more interesting because yeah. there's no security flaw here. No, but I, but it, man, that looks like a really bad move. The people who got the final it, security yes. update with it was Windows like, Don't 7. Don't let the door kick you on the way right? out. Right? <laughs> they had you know. wallpapers that turned black, and right. it was like, wait, really, Microsoft? Is that like your kiss of death? Goodbye. Your wallpapers are black now. And at first, so, they weren't going to patch it. Remember, they were saying, right. if you get extended security updates, we'll fix your black wallpapers. But now they're saying they will fix it for everyone <coughs> as of the to next To defend patch. Microsoft here, because as everyone knows, I am a world-class Microsoft defender. Hell yeah. <laughs> you know where your bread's buttered. <laughs> yeah. So, by the way, you're, you're, we're joking about that. So yes. I get that feedback. <laughs> um, the black screen thing, where the, the wallpaper disappears, it goes to a black screen, is one of the side effects of when your computer is not activated in Windows 7, right? So this, when you think about what's happening here, it's end of support. There's been some, it, the, the, the little bits that are shifting are kind of the same ones where it's not activated. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that's why this happened. I don't think it was malicious on Microsoft's part. Hopefully but it doesn't not. matter because they are going to fix it at least. So, but, I, but this is, you know, this, I've seen this kind of thing. The only reason this sure. is a little problematic for me is one of the things I've been saying is, well, the good news is you've had Windows 7. It's been out for 10 years. They've patched every conceivable flaw. <laughs> yeah. so, Except for the ones yeah. that they introduced. Yeah. Uh -huh. Right? So, so they, they just asked this code. with Patch Tuesday? Yeah, um, February. A week right. ago or two weeks ago, whenever it was, they, they released updates for Windows 7. And one of them I mean, is that yeah. gigantic full screen, you know, your computer's out of support. Yeah. Oh, message. I get well, it. And that's doing it. Even the simplest, you know. What did you write this in like Java or That's something? Like, what, what, <laughs> this is uh, it always comes back to Java. Massive <laughs> code base, and it's just fragile as yep. heck. And everything yep. affects everything else. It's the butterfly effect. So the solution then is to open source this thing and let the community take care of it. I love this idea. I wonder what it would I end up too. looking like. No, but here's why guys. I love this. So first of all, it can't first of because all. there's too much proprietary license. The, right. the free software <laughs> foundation is nuts. Let's get that out. They, those people are insane. And one of the things right. you have to kind of struggle through when you read the little blog post about this is, my God, are they entitled? You know, it's like we demand that Microsoft, ex it's like, guys, 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 just, yeah. just step back from the cliff for a second. <laughs> because honestly, the notion of Microsoft open sourcing Windows, despite the fact that, like Leo said, it's impossible. It's just never going to happen. Um, this would be like a win for everybody. <laughs> like this would totally be a win yeah. if they could ever do and it. And they don't but actually never... have to go through the FSF. There's lots of no, ways they could do no, this, no. including put it on their own gosh darn GitHub. Yeah. And, yep. and, they're uh, not doing it. No, they're, they're not. never going to do <laughs> it. And, and really, but, they can't do it because of this. Yeah. They have so much licensed code in there that they're not allowed to open source Yep. They wouldn't yep. be giving you the source code, really, the full source right. code. But plus, plus they could charge Windows 10 is Windows 7. Oh, yeah, no, they'd be right. giving so away the keys all, to the kingdom. Yeah. They shouldn't, they can't open source Windows 7. They it's would like have when to they came out with new Windows. Coke, they're not going to give away the old Coke <laughs> recipe. No, right. they're not. Nobody wants this anymore. <laughs> um, yeah. I think Come this, I, I mean, look, if I could just dream for a moment, I, I think this would be, this would be wonderful. This, this would solve problems. Again, it's never going to happen. But for, for like everybody on the stack, it would solve problems. Mm -hmm. 
Um, this, you know, for by people the way, like, uh, is uh, Alex Lindsay's long-standing plea to Apple to open source OS X. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, remember in the early days, we thought there was going to be an open source version yeah. of Windows uh, Mac OS X. Well, there uh, kind of was because Next Step became yeah. Open Step, which was, I think, open source or at least. But even of the it. what was the uh, the Darwin stuff, right? Was right. You know, that, was yeah. essentially like an open yeah, source. It's a mock version, but, kernel. They wrote their own stuff yeah. on top of it. It's actually much more doable than it would be for Microsoft open source Windows. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, neither, anyway. do you neither remember though? Year, a number of years ago, Mark Rusinovich said in some interview, "Yeah, we maybe one day we'll open source Windows." Remember he said that? Yep. 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 I so, mean, so I'll, 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 <laughs> I wish I could find this person. And then name, Frank I'll, Shaw I'll, I'll, called with, him exactly and said, yeah, do you and said "You're going over here, to Azure, buddy." Mark. <laughs> um, no. So, as as a reader of my site pointed out, this is this is very insightful. Um, he said, you know, Microsoft uh, open source Windows Live Writer, which is their little blog tool from That's Windows right. Live Essentials from 10 years ago. Yep. It took them two years <laughs> to release yeah. that thing. Yep. So we're not going to live long enough to see them ever open source Windows if you, you know, use that as an example. Which Just is to expend, expunge all the F words to, in the mm -hmm. comments yeah. took yes. hours. Right. Yes. <laughs> you know what, honestly... Leave those in. No, those are the, the open best source part. community Nobody would love that, that and would respect Microsoft yeah. more for You'd it. You'd get oh, so many links on Reddit. Yep. People would love it. It would be fun. I love it when they put in source code. And you see this sometimes. I don't know what this does. <laughs> I wrote this but a long here time you go. ago. <laughs> don't touch it. <laughs> you'll yeah, break exactly. it. Exactly. <laughs> You see that a lot. It's like we're going to discover that Windows actually compiles to P code, and that explains a uh, lot, doesn't uh, it? Maybe you were, you might be onto something. Plus, you know, there's got to be some ancient uh, code in there, which oh, yeah. would just be fascinating to find something that dates back um, from like the early 90s or something. This following paragraph was written by Bill Gates. No one really knows what it does. <laughs> uh, don't touch it. Anything by Dave Cutler, you know, would Cutler. be full of profanity. Uh, yeah. <laughs> This everything is going to break. Every he actually away. arranged the zeros and the ones so from a distance it looks like a nasty message to <laughs> digital or something. Uh, I do think, anyway, though, there yeah. is a case to be made often, not probably as well as the Free Software Foundation makes it. Yes, yes. But there's a case to be made often that uh, orphan software should be, and it, there is some precedent, this has happened from time to time, should be uh, released the to the community. Yeah, so they, the problem they there... They open source DOS, right? <laughs> Yeah, and look what uh, we got, FreeDOS. Okay. Well, but look, I, they can't open source this. It, it's, I know, there's I a, agree. There's a newer version that they're selling, right? So it's not, right. Windows is not orphaned. It, this is an older, no. now unsupported right. version. But I, again, I, I, you know, with the understanding, it can never happen. It would, this would be good for PC makers, good for users, good for yeah. developers, good for Microsoft. What about hackers, you know? I, you know? We might be, well, I mean, do, ha do people hack Linux because it's open source? I mean... Yeah, that's better, though. I mean, from the point of view of security, maybe initially it'd be a, a minefield. Hackers would go crazy and have great... Right, but then yeah. people would help but people defense, would fix it. Right? Yeah. yeah. I yeah. mean, in general, I wouldn't say open source software is more vulnerable. I, bet, I would say it's probably less vulnerable. It certainly but gets the fixed Linux faster. community could come up with a PWA for the insiders. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I mean, yeah. <laughs> saying. I'm just saying... <sighs> that guy. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, let's uh, let's uh, before we get to the back of the book, we got to do. We can't without a little Xbox love. By the way, yeah. I got yeah. a DVD, so I rarely use DVDs. The only <laughs> DVD player in the whole house is my Xbox. I was just thinking about this, and uh, so I hadn't turned it on maybe in a while, a couple weeks, a month. Not one, but two multi-gigabyte updates. I think they were 500 gigabytes each. Wow. Lisa finally got up and left. She said, we're not watching this DVD. This is ridiculous. Yikes. Give me a call when the 1990s come back. <laughs> and, and I have set it to update in the background. Because I don't like it. It's always, I, every time I turn on the Xbox, it says, all right, update time. How exciting. I just witnessed something yesterday that I'd never seen before, which was I turned the Xbox on I turned to go do something on my computer. I looked back and the screen turned off. And I was like, what's going on there? And I looked down and the Xbox, that white circle light on the front mm -hmm. was blinking white. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh my God, what if something's wrong with it? So I looked up, you know, I Googled it. I binged it, right? <laughs> I, <laughs> I Googled it and I said, come on. Uh, what, you know, white blinking lights. Um, 
Xbox One, and it meant that it was automatically installing a system update. Yeah. Oh, oh. Well, but in the middle of the day, does yours automatically install though? Really? Yeah. Because mine. Yeah, never I, let, does. I let it do the you know the. I tell it the to. power management where it can come on and do stuff. Right. And, I le- I just leave it on. That's what I finally yeah, just said. Just don't ever turn yeah. off, and please yeah. install your updates, and it doesn't. So I have to look at it again. So it does work. It does work. Yes, it <laughs> okay. works at that's, some of the most inopportune times yeah, well, imaginable. That's, but it, yeah, I wouldn't want it to work in the middle of the day. But if it just, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Stop. I've and never the other seen thing it do is, that before. I don't. To the Screen Actors Guild, my good friends, please stop sending DVDs. <laughs> they sent DVDs of Netflix shows. So, you oh, know, they, every year they have the SAG yep. Awards. I'm a member because yep. I'm an after. Yep. And so every year, as long as my I, dues are paid up, I get up like ton of discs, like 20 discs of for your consideration well. discs. Including Stranger Things, The Crown, The Irishman. It's like I don't need a disc in stunning 480p quality. <laughs> That's the other thing. It's it's, a, it's 480. People it's a forget. DVD. You know, it's, it's horrible standard looking. Standard definition. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. then you have to say, and it's really funny when you when you first launch it. It says, "All right, you have to promise that you will shred this disc after you watch it." <laughs> and then you say, "I promise," and then you can watch the movie. Wow. So if anybody wants these discs, I put them on my Plex yep. server. I'll yep, give them a log. They're up on eBay right yeah. now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nobody does because they're 480. In fact, a yeah. number of these movies I just bought on iTunes because it's like I, I can't. For, yeah. I, well, the, there was one movie, The Lighthouse. Yep. Have you seen that? No, mm-hmm. but I'm. I it's know wild, it but it's. Yeah. I'm looking at it and it's 1980 by. Uh, like what, three. <laughs> it's it's, it's like supposed to be a, a 1080, Leone, like 1980 by 1080, yeah. but it's yeah, shot yeah. four by three. So you oh, watch it. Yes, because I Sorry. think they're trying to do this because you want to feel like constrained. And it works, oh, by the way. Interesting. Mm-hmm. So like mm-hmm. a Stanley Kubrick kind of a thing. Yeah, it's black oh, and oh. white, four by oh. three. Yeah. You feel like you're watching an old movie. I thought, well, there's something wrong with this. And I looked, and no, it's 1920 by 1080. They're just not using all of the screen. Oh, wow. That's Mm -hmm. that's amazing. And then I thought, so I thought, oh, it must be the DVD they sent me. So I bought it on iTunes. It looks exactly the same. (laughs) (laughs) It's a a wild movie. Willem Dafoe is uh, uh, just amazing in it. He's a, he's a sea captain. Arr! Aye! Me. He's a, the guy says, yes, sir. He says, say aye, sir! <laughs> anyway, I'm sorry. Xbox, Paul, please take <laughs> That's it over. That's so uninteresting aye. compared to that last topic. Aye, sir. Um, we only have one minor Xbox note. Uh, February 1st is coming up. When's February 1st? Probably Saturday or Sunday. So Microsoft has Saturday. Microsoft has released the list of games that are coming out for those people who have Xbox Live Gold accounts through their um, Games of Gold program. So uh, TT, Isle of Man, call it, how do you say that? Ch- Chithulu? Cthulhu. <laughs> Cthulhu. Cthulhu. It's like a, it's like a Cthulhu. Barcelonan word. Cthulhu. Cthulhu. <laughs> Fable Heroes. And it, the most interesting one is uh, the original Xbox version, not Xbox 360, but the original Xbox version of Star Wars Battlefronts, so the first Ooh, Battlefront. That was game. a good game. Yeah, I like that. It doesn't have uh, online uh, play anymore, oh. unfortunately, because it's like two thousand years old. But <laughs> that's the whole point. You'll of be it. able to play it on your Xbox One X. Mm-hmm. Starting February sixteenth. Nice. Pretty cool. Nice Cthulhu. Cthulhu. How do you say it? I think Cthulhu, right, Mary Jo? Cthulhu. Isn't it a? I always I always wondered how you pronounce that. Isn't it an H.P. Lovecraft? Yes, it is. Character. Cthulhu. I believe it's Chase P. Lovecraft, Leo. Uh, <laughs> the Call of Cthulhu, published in Weird Tales H- in 1928 by H.P. Lovecraft. H.P. Lovecraft. H.P. You know, it's funny, even Wikipedia doesn't uh, have a pronunciation. Normally. Chith- oh, wait a minute. Chith- Etymology, spelling, and pronunciation. They actually have a whole paragraph. Oh, good. Of course they do. And? Uh, it's Cthulhu, according uh, to Cthulhu. Karsten. Cthulhu. Lovecraft so if you're, transcribed um, you guys, the pronunciation of Cthulhu as K-H-L-U-L-H-L-O-O. It said that the first syllable is pronounced gutturally and very syllable? thickly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I put the emphasis on the wrong syllable. Cthulhu. Uh, <laughs> yeah. so when I read Cthulhu. The Lord of the Rings, all of the, oh, yeah. when I was like in the sixth grade, a million years ago, yeah. all of the C names, like Kirith Ungle, yeah. are hard Cs, but of course I read them as S sound C's like yeah. Sirith Ungle. 
Mm-hmm. And then you find out years later that you pronounced it wrong and it's in your head. Exactly. You can't ever get it out. You can never change it. No. Yeah. So this is like that. It's like Cthulhu. I've and always said Cthulhu. Cthulhu. And I'm Cthulhu. so glad, glad that uh, the Harvard boy so, has corrected me. <laughs> you've, read the, you, you've heard of the sort of Shannara? <laughs> yeah. Uh, right. So I met the author of that book and yeah. he told me that it was pronounced Shanara. And Shana-ra. I said, no, it's not. And I'm not pronouncing it that way. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> I pronounce Shanana. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Shanara. Shanara. And I'm like, yep, that's not happening. Wow. Cthulhu. <laughs> Cthulhu. Cthulhu. Right. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> the back of the book is up next. But first, a word from our sponsor. <laughs> The fine folks at Fresh Books, and I say fine because they saved my bacon many moons ago. Uh, I was uh, this is when I was going up to Canada to do call for help, and I had to send an invoice every month in Canadian dollars. Not just an invoice for my time; I also had to bill them for the airfare and the hotel. And man, it, it was such a pain to get, get, go get the receipts and all that stuff, staple them to the invoice. Fire up Microsoft Word. Oh, fire up Excel too, because I got converted to Canadian dollar. I just it got to be such a pain. I stopped invoicing. At which point, I learned such a valuable lesson that if you don't send invoices, you don't get paid. <laughs> <laughs> and fin- I finally sent like six months of invoices, and this the bookkeeper yelled at me. She said, "If you ever do this again, you're not going to ever. Get, we're never going to pay you again. You can't. You have to send it every month." So. I was bemoaning my fate when Amber MacArthur told me about these guys. Fresh books. They're up in Toronto. This is how long ago this was. This, they were a Web 2.0 startup. And now, of course, they're a, a SaaS startup. They are the number one accounting software in the cloud. Fresh books, because it's online, is always giving you more and more tools. For instance, now you have the ability to invite contractors, employees, and business partners to manage projects. You can give access to select individuals. You can approve your project management workflow. Of course, one of the clear advantages of FreshBooks is the the knowledge day-to-day you'll have about what's going on, time tracked, budgets, deadlines. You even know if you're making money or not, which is something a lot of freelancers don't find out until tax time. You can, you can assign project due dates. You can overview project status. You can track your team's expenses. And this, by the way, you, the expenses is all with the FreshBooks app. You take a picture. It goes in the invoice. It goes in the bookkeeping. You can even set up FreshBooks to automatically call your bank every day and get the latest expenses. It just makes it so much easier to know what's going on. Invite staff, client, or contracts, uh, contractors for a project to sign rates or hours. You can have different rates for... The same client, but for different projects, which happens all the time, right? Try that in a lot of these other systems. Time entry report will give uh, accurate job and project status to your client. You've got complete permissions, by the way, so you can set who can see what, who can change what. The mobile app does it all, so you're never offline. And you can even ask them if there's a problem because they have the best customer service. Nice people there in Toronto, right? Phone, email, live chat, somebody who always is there and has your company's back. Running business can happen all in one place, streamlining the effectiveness of your team to help you get the job done. 24 million people worldwide have used FreshBooks. I might have been the first. I was not the last. Maximize your business's workflow with FreshBooks. All you have to do is go to freshbooks.com slash windows. And uh, if you do us a favor... Let them know you heard about it on Windows Weekly. When when they say, how did you hear about us? Just type in Windows Weekly in that box there, and you will get 30 days free to try it. I think you'll like it. Freshbooks.com slash Windows. And don't forget to tell them you heard it on Windows Weekly. Thank you, Freshbooks, for supporting the show. Now, let's go to Paul and uh, his tip of the week. Oh, I have to turn on his mic oh, no. of the week, too. Go ahead. What happened? Oh, I had oh, your mic sorry. off. Tip oh, of the week. Oh, because laugh- I was laughing during your promo. Yeah, I don't let you laugh during the ads. <laughs> I, uh, no, I laugh when you said if you don't uh, invoice someone, you're not going to get paid. It's I like, true. Yes, I've, ex- I've experienced that. Yes, every yes. freelancer. It turns, <laughs> out, yeah, it turns out you have to ask for the money. It's true. Silly, isn't it? Then they turn me off. So uh, my tip is uh, actually a tip for me. It's kind of self-serving. But um, for the past three months, I've been working on this Notepad clone, which I've cre- uh, called .NET, .NET Pad because it's created with the .NET framework and Windows Forms and Visual Basic. And it's actually kind of done, although I've been working on um, 
like a C sharp version and also a version with WPF, which is the Windows Presentation Foundation, just to sort of see what that looks like. Um, no programming project is ever really done. I know. I could I could obsess over this and literally yeah. spend the next year working on Notepad for some reason, but I've decided I should probably move on. So <laughs> um, I'd like to move on to something that is C-sharp based, uh, WPF, and maybe even .NET Core. Uh, but I'm looking for some ideas from listeners or readers um, about maybe the type of project it could be. I'd like it not to take as much time as I spent on Notepad. So, um <laughs> You know, it could be, it, it could be, you got to remember too, sorry, I should say WPF w was the framework that shipped with Windows Vista, right? Which was Longhorn, mm -hmm. which was, and it was called Avalon originally, if you're familiar with the Longhorn stuff. Um, the point of it was to allow for, on the desktop, this is before we had store apps, but to allow for those kind of, um, you know, animations, three graphics and uh, dynamic layouts, you know, kind of content based apps and things. So if you think about stuff like, the news app in Windows 10 or the weather app, those are kind of the type of thing. I mean, those are more modern versions, but those types of experiences. So anyway, if anyone has any idea for something that won't um, completely obliterate the next six months of my life, um, I'm just looking for some ideas. I have an idea. Notepad editor, maybe. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> that was her idea. <laughs> no, no, my idea is what about making a blocker for that uh extension oh. for office 365 <laughs> that's what steve Pro gibson would do <laughs> that's what steve gibson um, would do yeah like a natural right like a, a navigation app that yeah. for some reason that blocks the, yeah and like it, call, it deflects uh, it deflects right. the extension he'd call it of. something like the never bing thing he'd have a clever never thing. bing <laughs> never <laughs> bing. yeah with bing sins.com <laughs> um deep bingify <laughs> Okay. Anyway, I'll just throw that out. Um, and I have an article up about this. I kind of, uh, uh, whatever. Anyway, I've been, I've been, I've been doing a lot of this game? stuff. What about a game? Um, I'm going to do a game eventually. That's gonna, that will happen, um, but not for this one. Call of the, Duty cat. <laughs> cat, cat of <laughs> just a cat for Call of Duty. Yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> yes. He's thinking yeah, about it. Look at him. I'll get there. I will get there. There'll be there'll be a yeah, game. A game will happen. That will be eventually. But I want to do. I want to work through the Microsoft frameworks first, um, and I'm kind of doing them in order. So WPF and then UWP and probably Xamarin and probably Blazor and that's you cool. know we'll yeah that's a good idea. Power apps, whatever. Yeah, so. become a become an expert in the Microsoft platforms. Yeah, eventually I'll get to something that happened in the past decade. You know, um, <laughs> but I'll get there. I think I think WPF will be a nice launching point for the newer stuff because it uses XAML and nice, very simple. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, and then the app pick of the week is something we already talked about, but again, I, I can't stress this enough. I think anyone listening to this podcast is both capable of doing this and probably has an interest in it. Um, look this up: the Surface Duo emulator. It does require you to install Android Studio on your computer, which is terrible, but you don't have to use it. And you can check out uh, what Microsoft thinks is going to be the future of. At least some computing. That's what one, you should write. Feature. You should write a Duo app. I am. Mm. Yep, that will be. But you know, again, in the, in the scope of things, I mean, honestly, uh, I'm not. It's going to be a while before I can yeah. get to that. But yeah, mm. yeah, I, I'm definitely looking at it. You like you miss programming. You like doing it, don't you? It has. Uh, you know, I've always um, I've I always love played it. around with it. Yeah, for like I've always have, but I think the thing that's been nice about this project is it forced me to stick with one thing and actually kind of see it through. Because mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. I would just kind of screw around yeah, with stuff too. and then yeah, yeah. I would do little bits, little small things, and then kind of forget about it. And yep. so this has really focused me um, in a nice way. Yeah, like, I used to write full programs, and now I just do like the, yeah, it's like like writing little ditties. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I've I've always done little. Th I've gone part way, you know, with certain things. But yeah. this is this has been nice. Um, so I want to do other things like this. I guess. Uh, how about an enterprise pick of the week from Mary Jo Foley? What do you think? Okay, um, first enterprise pick is about Dynamics three sixty five. If you're a customer of those products and services, you should know that as of this week, you can start checking out the quote hundreds of new features coming to Dynamics 365 and the Power Platform between February and September this year. This is how they do it in the Dynamics world. They publish wave one, then they publish wave two, and they list all the features coming for all the different 
modules in Dynamics 365 all at once. Usually they add a few more once they publish the initial list, but what was different this time um, compared to how they've done this in the past is in the past they gave, they gave us a single PDF that was usually over 100 pages, but it was easy to kind of look through that and see all the new features. Maybe the PDF wasn't ready yet, I'm not sure, but this time we have to go through the Microsoft Docs pages and look at each product separately to see the list of the new features. They say there is going to be a PDF um, out by the end of this week, a single one. But if you really want to know right now, you can go into the links. I've got some of the links in my blog and Microsoft's published them where you can see here's what's coming for sales. Here's what's coming for marketing. Here's what's coming for finance. Here's what's coming for Power, power Apps, Power Automate. Um, I would say looking through the list, uh, I looked kind of briefly through, there's nothing that jumped out at me as some gigantic major new feature. Instead, I'd say they're mostly incremental features. There's more AI type insights features coming across the board. Um, there's a lot of things like add, you know, making this easier to automate, making this work more uh, cleanly and, and concisely when integrating these two products. It's that kind of stuff. Uh, but still, you know, if you're a Dynamics customer, I'm sure there are things in there that you would care about. So it's worth checking those out. Nice. Yeah. Uh, and you have a second pick. I do. So I don't use the word apocalypse usually <laughs> uh, in my headlines. <laughs> Maybe I should use that more. We leave that to Paul. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, Kevin Beaumont, Gossy the Dog on Twitter said, get ready for the potential LDAP signing apocalypse coming in March. So he uh, put a blog post out talking about how in March, Microsoft is going to change the way LDAP handles signing. Um, LDAP is the lightweight directory, active directory protocol. Um, and Microsoft is changing the way it does signing with that to make it more secure. The result of this though, is a number of apps that uh, touch on LDAP and use LDAP channel binding are going to break. They've, they're they warning people, like this change is going to break a lot of apps. So if you're an admin, you need to go and look up Microsoft's guidance around the, this LDAP channel binding that's coming in March because they're going to push this update and things are going to break. So it's better if you check your apps now and make sure they're all set. Uh, this affects everything that uses things like Windows Server 2008, up to Windows 10. I mean, there's there's a lot of things that this affects. So it's good to get in there and check if you have something that may be affected and head it off at the pass. Does the A in LDAP stand for apocalypse? <laughs> yes, I think it does. <laughs> it does now. <laughs> I, I was asking another friend of mine who covers security about this, and he said, you know, it, it is big, but not everybody is going to be affected. I'm not sure how many people are. And, you know, if, if you're somebody who uh, lives in that world around, around, uh, act, uh, around Active Directory networking, you probably think this is really amazingly gigantic and <laughs> everybody's going to be affected, right? But, right. I, I mean, Kevin Beaumont doesn't usually put out the alarm unless it's something likely to be a big deal, in my experience. So you would think anybody using LDAP would know. Ahead you would that. think. And I'm sure Microsoft has sent out warnings. But you know what? People don't always heed these warnings, just like yeah. the Bing thing. Like Microsoft yep. has warned people. Microsoft this is coming. should um, add some LDAP <laughs> improvements to a uh, browser extension. Yeah, and push it to people forcibly. <laughs> Just a thought. Yeah. Anyway, something something to be aware of. I'm not going to say alarmed yet, but March March isn't that far away, and that's when this is going to hit. I am ready to talk beer, Mary okay. Jo. Let's do it. Let's do it. Um, it's been a while maybe a week or two since I've talked about Imperial Stouts, but it's winter. So you talk a lot about them during the winter. And Perennial um, makes an excellent one called Abraxas. Abraxas is an Imperial Stout that's made with cinnamon sticks, <laughs> vanilla, um, cacao nibs, <laughs> and chilies. Wow. And, wow. and it's kind of like a mole dessert. of bottled beers. Yes, that's a perfect description of this. It's roasty like an imperial stout, but then has all these sweet things added. So I just had the 2019 version recently, and I thought it was a little on the sweeter side. I wished it had a little more chili, but it's so good. Who cares? It's 12%. 
It's a dessert in a glass. It's worth the splurge. You should try it. Perennial Abraxas. Perennial Abraxas. I think I had that in my knee last year. <laughs> <laughs> Fortunately, it's an arthroscopic procedure. Yeah. It is. Oh, be... Microsoft earnings just happened. Put people. Okay. All right. All Revenue right. was $36.9 billion. Sounds big. Is that good? Great quarter, guys. By the way, Surface, Surface was basically $2 billion, $1.976. Wow. That's great. Good. Yep, Stock doing is well. up th more than three bucks. <clears throat> That's usually a sign they've they've it is be they beat the street. <laughs> yep. Surface revenue was up six percent. Windows OEM revenue was up eighteen percent. Wow. Six twenty six percent. Is the is the uh, holiday quarter a big quarter for tr traditionally for Microsoft or? Yeah, See, it is for it, Apple. It's like a it's not, like not as much as it like Apple is off not, the charts. Right. Yeah. You know? yeah. It's usually high because it's like if you have new Surface devices, they will sell more of those. But it's not like their Q4 when, you know, they're closing the quarter and their salespeople are out there really selling. That's that's usually their big one. Right. Well, the call's coming up in about a little more than an hour, a little less than an hour. Uh, yeah. I will let you two get to it, okay. even though you will be muted <laughs> during the call. Right. Yeah. Can you just we snort with laughter at any point, or I, uh, I do often it. do. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you snorting, Paul. I have Is a bottle you, of whiskey I bring, and every time <laughs> he says Windows, I take a drink, and the whole bottle's still there when he's done. Any, I was going to say that you're good. <laughs> any big yep. write-offs? Any uh, any negatives at all? I haven't. Look, I have to look at it. I, yeah. I'm just saying. Right. The, we'll yeah. talk about it the, next week. Yeah. Yeah, we yeah. will. Yeah. yeah. Paul Thorat. Therot.com, T-H-U-R-R-O-T-T.com. His books are at leanpub.com. Don't forget that Windows, the, the guy, Field Guide to Windows 10, which is an awesome uh, volume, constantly updated illustrations available in the posters that are so cool. Leanpub.com. Mary Jo Foley writes for ZDNet at allaboutmicrosoft.com. Together, they form the two-headed duo we know as... Cthulhu. <laughs> the asshole bug. Yeah, exactly. Actually, I'm looking now, by the way, and apparently Lovecraft himself pronounced it Cthulhu. 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 There was no. I never trust the author. That's what I. Yeah, K H L U L H L O O. There was no. There was no th. That that C T H is just a ch. Ch. Cthulhu. Cthulhu. It's from the Greek, they believe. Chitonic, which is, means subterranean. Chitonic. <laughs> no Tolkien. That's all I'm saying. It's no Tolkien. <laughs> Cthulhu. 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 Uh, maybe that's why they named it uh, Hulu. That could be it. Could be. <laughs> I I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's definitely why they named it Quibi. I uh, I have no doubt. <laughs> yes. <that>. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Call of Quibi. Call of Quibi. Ah, ladies and gentlemen, we do this show every Wednesday, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern Time. That would be 1800 UTC. If you'd like to watch or listen live, streams have been provided for your delectation at twit.tv slash live. On-demand versions of the show, nicely packaged up and coated with a non-stick coating, are available at twit.tv slash ww. Well, you wouldn't want it to stick to your pod player. Twit.tv slash WW. If you download from there, that's nice. You can get on YouTube, that's nice. But the best thing you could do is subscribe. That way you don't even have to think about it. It just appears every week. We're trying really hard to get Joe Rogan's 190 million downloads a month. <laughs> Which means every man, woman, and child in America listens at least monthly to the Joe Rogan show. Uh, no, actually, the pop. What's the population of America now? Three hundred million, something like. That. Oh, it's got. Mm. No, it's like three, three fifty plus, isn't it? God, I remember when it was two hundred. Back in the day, <laughs> yeah, it was so. The traffic was wonderful back then, wasn't it? <laughs> it was so you just you'd pull right up out front. You could just leave mm -hmm. the car running and hop out. <laughs> exactly. Be there when you when you got out yep, of work. No problems. Yeah, no problem. Mm. Uh, let's, uh, let's, uh, let's break for a spell so you guys can go do your work and, uh, we'll Alrighty. see you back next time right here on Windows. Right. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.